evening, football fans, and welcome to Pikeville High School. This is Ken Hall along with Charlie Pinson and Shane Murray on camera. And we're here for the first round of the playoffs. It's uh, hard to believe, Charlie, but the playoffs are up on us. Well, I'll tell you what, this season, it seems like it's gone by quickly. We've had some good football games, and this should be no exception here as Williamsburg making that long trip down, uh, well, they look like they're from Tennessee, Ken, as they're wearing that Tennessee orange out there, but they're right, I think they're 13 miles from the border of Tennessee. That's what they were told earlier. It should be an interesting football game, though. A true passing team coming in here in Williamsburg. Somebody said they've thrown the ball over 2,800 yards this season. I saw the uh, stats there on their quarterback. He's uh, one of the leading passers in the state. He's got over 3,100 yards uh, passing. That's Andy Greer, and uh, he leads the state in touchdown passes, too, with 43 uh, Quite an impressive passing game, but uh, Williamsburg is a small team. Uh, don't have a don't have a lot of players, small in numbers and a, and a small line. So, uh, be interesting to see if they can play with this Pikeville team. This is the of course the first round of the playoffs. Pikeville comes in the number two seed in our district here, and uh, Williamsburg the three seed out of their district. Yeah, it should be it should be very interesting. Uh, kind of a chilly night out here. It's supposed to get down in the 30s, and it's well on its way. Is See a lot of people bundled up out there in their cold weather gear, and they've already had the uh, the toss, and I believe that uh, Pike will, will kick the football off to Williamsburg here, and that's exactly what's going to happen is the, the uh, looks like we got a little bit of that sound out of our way. Yeah, I don't notice they turned the power off on those, uh, those lights. Lights in the press box. It's creating a hum. Uh, looks like we're just about ready for this one. Pike will ready to kick it away, and back, back deep is Williamsburg. I think that is... Uh, 22, William Renfro in the middle, on the end out here. In the middle, it's number 13 in there. That's uh, Will Hill. And on the far side, I can't see the number, but we're about ready to go back to football here as Michael getting set to kick it off. It's, uh, it's number 33, maybe Matt Ayers, or Aaron Root, number 31. All I can tell you, it's a three over there on the other side. And Pikeville has the football teed up, ready to kick it away as soon as the official gives them the signal. And here we go. Here comes the kick. It's going to be a kick down the middle. It'll be taken at the 20-yard line there by Williamsburg. Trying to come up hill, trying to come up the outside. He's across the 40. He's out across midfield. One man to beat. He gets drug out of bounds at about the 33-yard line over there. And let's see, it's 25. On the tackle, Tim Champlin and Williamsburg in great position to start this football game. Well, they are. I'll tell you, Champlin saved a touchdown there. It's uh, right down the sideline. Good blocking by Williamsburg and uh, great return. That's true. You know, uh, we talked about Williamsburg having a lot of quickness that they're not very big, and they really showed it that time as Will Hill took off down the sideline and lucky, lucky to be pulled down if you're a Bible Panther fan. Trips right, one wide out left, shotgun formation this time coming for Williamsburg. And back to throw is the quarterback, Greer. Greer rolling out, now he's under pressure, cuts back to the back to the right side, looking, now he throws it on the run, he's got a man in, complete, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver over there, number 33, that is uh, Tyler Ayers. And I'll tell you what, uh, Greer showed some quickness there, avoiding that pass rush. Uh, looked like the Panthers might get him as he rolled to the left, but he reversed field and came back to the right. Charlie could have ran and picked up a lot of yards. but uh, Yeah, that's true. That's what I was wondering, why he didn't scramble out of there, but uh, that's probably why he has 3,100 yards passing, because he doesn't run with the ball very much. Again, trips right, one wide out left, single back in the backfield. As back deep. He is Greer back to throw. He's got a man. It's going to be incomplete in and out of the hands over there of, uh, I believe that was 20, 22, 22, 22. As the uh, pass was accurate there, uh, Renfro just couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, that's going to be, you know, uh, Williamsburg has really run some pretty good routes here, and this cold weather may have something to do with these first few passes falling short because those fingers are going to be a little bit numb after early. And again, Williamsburg coming back up the line of scrimmage. This time they're going to go with twin split each way. Greer in the shotgun. Third and ten. Greer looking over the defense. Now he's got a man in motion going back to the far side. The ball snapped over the head of Greer. He didn't even chase after that one, so he knew it was uh, offside. There's a whistle before the, uh, before the snap. So. 
He must have heard that whistle. He said, eh, no use, no use wasting my energy here early. The uh, penalty illegal motion against Williamsburg. That'll back it up five yards and leave them with third and 15 now. Ball back at the Popwell 37 yard line. First opening drive of the game. As Kim will say, in first series of the ball game for either team, uh, Williamsburg deep in Pikeville territory here now, still at the 47 or third, third down and 15. Trips left, one wide out right, shotgun for Greer. Greer has one back in the backfield with him. That is uh, Jones. Greer back to throw now, rolling out to his left. And now he's scrambling with it, and he's going to go down, but he's sacked back here at the 45 yard line. Will be fourth down and about. Uh, 23 coming up now for Williamsburg. As that was Josh Sullivan on the sack. Good penetration there by the uh, Pikeville defensive line. And Sullivan, the big sack. And now punting formation now coming up for Williamsburg. And back deep for Pikeville will be number two, Weston Robinson. And number four over there is Matt Sexton. Here comes the punt by Williamsburg. Good time. It's going to be a, a horrible punt. Actually, the thing's only going to go a couple of, you know, looks like it might got seven or eight yards out of it, Kim. Yeah, let's see where they're going to spot it here. Looks like at about the 39, so a six-yard punt. And you can see he was angling toward the sideline, wanted to kick it away from Robinson, I imagine, but uh, didn't, didn't get it down the field far enough, just kicked it basically straight over to the sideline. Yeah, you know, should have run a play probably on fourth down there. Uh, wouldn't have given up much more yardage. Pikeville coming up with one wide out split each way. I formation in the backfield. Sword under center. Now they're going to shift out of it. It'll be twins right, twins left. Sword will go out of the shotgun this time. And Derek Sword takes the snap, fakes the handoff, going to throw it out quickly. A little uh, flanker screen out there. And Parrish has it, and he's going to pick up about seven, maybe eight yards. Kins gets out across the 45-yard line. Jesse Parrish out there on the reception, and they're going to spot it right at the 45, so we'll pick up a six on the play. And he'll bring up second down and four here for the Pikeville Panthers. Ten minutes, 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. This is Pikeville's first offensive drive of the evening. One wide out split each way. Now the I formation in the backfield. Sword will go from under center this time. Sword takes the snap, hands it off to Robinson. Second man through. Robinson stood up and dropped in the hole there, Ken Hall. No gain on the play. Right at the line of scrimmage, and uh, good hit there. Didn't, didn't get the number on that, but uh, quite a defensive play there by Williamsburg. No gain on the play. It'll be third and four now for the Panthers. And Mike will uh, try to get the ball up the middle that time. Weston Robinson. Robinson done a pretty good job all season running the football for the Panthers. Uh, look for maybe try to get something to the outside this time. Twin split each way. Sword will go out of the shotgun. Sword. Takes a snap and fumbles it. Now he's rolling out to his left. Look, he got a man open, throws it incomplete, intended over there for Jess Parrish. It'll bring up fourth down and about four now for the Pikeville Panthers. Yeah, and the punting unit comes on the field now. And 9.39 to go here in the first quarter. Pikeville will put the ball away for the first time this after, this evening. I got to get used to Pikeville in the afternoon. I don't know something yeah, about that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and you can join us tomorrow afternoon as we'll be here watching the Pikeville College Bears play. And back deep for Williamsburg is 36, Matt Jones. And here comes the... Well, it's a fake punt up the middle by Pike. Well, I think it's Jess Parrish. Maybe if it is, he's got the first down, whoever it is, as he's out across midfield down to about the 47-yard line. And it, uh, that was, no, sorry. That was Brenton Hamilton. Brenton Hamilton. Number 30 on the carry. So Pike will comes up with the big trick play here to uh, get the first down now in Williamsburg territory at the 47-yard line. That's a big play right there for Pike. Well, can you? It sure is. And the Panthers come up again with one wide out split each way. The I formation in the backfield. Sword will go from under center. Takes the snap, hands it off the second man through. That's Robinson. Robinson gets through the line of scrimmage out across the 45, down to about the 42-yard line. So that'd be a gain of about four yards on the play. And it'll be second and six now for the Panthers. As a gutsy call by Coach, Coach Chris McNamee here early in the game. You know, I tell you what, uh, both teams really want to get off to a good start here, try to get that momentum behind them. And Pikeville, with a good, a big play there on fourth down, they'll go with twins right, eye formation in the backfield. Sword under center. 
Sword takes the snap, pitches it out to Robinson. Robinson trying to cut the corner, and they stretch him out and bring him down right about the line of scrimmage. May have got one, no more. And they're going to mark it back closer to the 43. Lo actually lost a yard on the play. So it's going to be a third down in about six and a half, I guess, maybe six. Uh, coming up now for the Pikeville well, Panthers. 8.32 to play here in the first quarter. No score in the ball ballgame. Uh, Pikeville still on their first drive of the evening. One wide out split each way again. The eye formation in the backfield. Sword will go from under center. Sword gets it, takes the snap, looks, gives it off on the left side this time. I believe that's Parrish. Ball's loose, and looks like Williamsburg may have come up with it. I believe the Panthers came up with it. Williamsburg player had a shot at it, but... Uh, didn't, didn't pull it in, and uh, let's see, number four for the Panthers uh, comes up with it there. That's uh, Matt, Matt Sexton. Sexton recovers it, and it's close enough to a first down for a measurement. Very close. You know, that's that's a big break there for the Pikeville Panthers. That ball loose. Looked like Williamsburg was going to scoop it up or, or at least cover it up, and Sexton able to jump down there and, and get the loose football and keep possession for the Panthers here. And Third one that is first, and just teams. barely got it by the nose. So another first down, Pikeville. And the Panthers uh, making uh, making the best of the situations they've been dealt so far. Ken picking up the fourth, the first down on the fake pump on that fourth down situation now, and in the fumble, squirts ahead just enough for a first down. One wide out split each way. Sword under center. He's got the eye behind him. Sword takes the snap, hands it off up the middle, and that's. Benton Hamilton, I believe, on the carry, and he's going to get out across the 30 for a pickup of about six yards on the play. Good run by Brenton Hamilton. And I tell you, though, the Pikeville well, looking good so far early in this first drive. Uh, picking it up, the big fourth down conversion, and now they've got that momentum behind them. They're moving the football on the ground. One wide out split each way again, the eye formation. Sword takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off again to Hamilton. And Hamilton's going to pick up another first down down to about the 22-yard line. So, Brenton Hamilton coming in and making some big plays now for Pikeville. He sure is. Uh, an eight-yard pickup on that carry. Hamilton uh, already with 24 yards rushing on three carries on this drive, opening drive. First and 10 now for the Panthers at the 22-yard line. So, the Maroon threatening to score here and take the early lead in this one, only 7-15 to play in the first quarter as Pikeville has controlled this football on this one drive, taking a lot of time off the clock as well. Twins split each way. Now they're going to switch back out of that sword. We'll go back under center. They'll shift back into the eye. One wide out split each way. Sword takes a long snap count, takes it, and hands it off to the big man up the middle. I believe that might be uh, Robert Shirtliff. It is Shirtliff. Uh, look, look like a little mix-up of a play, but he got it down to about the 13-yard line for a pickup of about nine yards, so they'll take a mix-up like that anytime. Anytime. So second down and one here coming up for the Pikeville Panthers. And everything's going, seems to be going the way of the Panthers here. All the breaks that have fallen on their side of the tally sheet. One wide out each way again. Sword under center. He's got the eye behind him. Sword takes the snap, and he runs the option this time. Keeps it himself. Gets up to about the 10-yard line. Should have the first down on a gain of about two. And it is the first down. They're going to say he's at the 11-yard line, 11. not the 10. So a big play there by Pikeville. So, so far, the quarterback making some good decisions on that option. He's giving it up the middle a couple of times to Hamilton. He's picked up some big yards. Uh, the Kind of ran into Shirley there a while ago, but uh, both of them able to come off of that with a big gain of about eight yards. So Pikeville really looking good. Yes, they are. First and 10 now from the Williamsburg 11 for the Panthers. This time, I will go twins left, eye formation. And here comes a handoff to Robinson. Robinson gets tripped up to the line of scrimmage. You get across the eight for a gain of about two. It'll be second down, second down and eight now coming up for Pike. Well, from the eight. 5.30 to go here in the first quarter as Pike will really dominate in the time of possession here in this first quarter of football. Yes, they are. They primarily kept the ball on the ground. Sword has thrown two passes, completed one for a six-yard gain. That was to uh, Jesse Parrish. 
Second and seven now. Twins right eye formation. Sword takes the snap, hands it off on the second man through this time. Shirley, if he's into the end zone, touchdown. Pikeville High School, a seven yard touchdown run puts the Panthers up six to nothing with 5.13 to go here in the first quarter. And big Rob, Robert Shirtliff going from the tailback position. To, that's some serious power football. Really running two fullbacks in there when they've got this, that lineup. And Pipe will go for the extra point here. That is uh, Puckett ready to kick the ball in there. 38, no, 35, I'm sorry, that's the kick is up. It looks to be good. That is 35. Brian Elkins on the extra point, and Pikeville leads it 7 to nothing with 5.13 to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a break and be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. That's what it was. And here's the kick. This time it's a squib kick. It'll be picked up at about the 16-yard line by Williamsburg. Williamsburg trying to come out of this one, and no, not the field position they had to want to go, Ken. is great field, great protection by Pikeville on the kickoff. Yes, it is. As he's down at the 21-yard line, only a uh, five-yard pickup. Think of Matt was, Jones. Uh, uh, I think it was, was Jones or Hamlin, number 20, okay. Chase Hamlin. But I'll tell you, not, uh, not a very good return as he was just running full steam across the field. Uh, he didn't, never did turn it up and uh, try to get upfield. Williamsburg again going out of spread offense. Crips right, one wide out left. And shotgun for Greer. He takes the snap, and we're going to have uh, offsides, I believe, on Pipe. Well, looks like the defense uh, may have been in the neutral zone on that one. And here's the call. It is offside, Pipe, so it'll be first and five now for Williamsburg from the 26-yard line. So Williamsburg picks up five on the penalty, so first and five now. Let's see if they can, uh, if Andy Greer and company can put the football up in the air so far. Pipe will do a good job on pass defense this ball game. Yes, they have. Cripps right, one wide out left. Greer again in the shotgun. Greer now gets set, takes the snap, looking to throw, has time, goes across the middle. It's going to be caught and up for a first down of end of about 13, 14 yards out there. Was that uh, 21, 21, Brett Barton? And Barton will pick up the first down, and that is the initial first down of the ball game now for Williamsburg. But uh, it seems like right now, if you give him the time to throw the football, he, he can he can really pick out a good receiver. He's, he's pretty accurate. Again, had a 10-yard pickup on that play. Twins each way this time again. Greer in the shotgun, rolling out this time, rolling to his right, looking, throwing on the run. It's going to be caught, and a gain of about seven on the play as this one comes over to the near side to number 33, Tyler Ayers. And that's exactly what you expected to see out of Williamsburg when we came into the football game, Ken. Tyler Ayers, one of the uh, two receivers on this team that's had over 1,000 yards receiving this year. 4.20 to go now in the first quarter play. Pikeville leads it 7 to nothing. Williamsburg now starting to move the football. Two first down, or two complete passes in a row. Twins split each way again. Greer in the shotgun. One back in the backfield with him. Greer takes the snap looking. Pumps now. He's going to run it himself. And Greer got back to the line of scrimmage. No more than that, Kins. Third down and about three now coming up for Williamsburg. Yeah, as he tried a quarterback draw there, but uh, good job by the Panthers to uh, pick up on it. We've got a uh, Pikeville player down. Looks like it's Tim Justice, I believe, Ken, 69, and uh, looks like maybe an ankle or a knee injury as they're down there working on that leg. 3.55 to go here in the first quarter of play. It's Pikeville 7, Williamsburg nothing. Uh, third down and three coming back for the Williamsburg uh, Yellow Jackets. Tell you what, with this injury timeout, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment on the Intermountain Sports Network. The best benefits, health insurance, dental insurance, educational assistance program, life insurance, retirement plan, 403B voluntary retirement plan, paid sick days, holiday bonus, personal day, birthday holiday, 
Employee discounts at the cafeteria, gift shop, and several businesses. Free parking. Six national holidays. And long-term disability. Here are just some of the great career opportunities at the region's fastest-growing medical facility. A clinical nurse specialist in nursing administration. A regular part-time patient resource counselor. Occupational therapist for inpatient and outpatient rehab. Physical therapist. A physical therapist assistant. Assistant chief operating officer. A director of hospital education and a director of materials management. Fact your resume to 437-9708 or apply in person on the second floor of the hospital human resources office Monday through Friday 8 to 4:30 Pikeville Methodist Hospital East Kentucky's medical leader moving at the speed of life cost cutters looking smart cost cutters feeling great cost cutters Having fun. Cost cutters. Knowing what matters. Cost cutters. We cut hair without cutting into your day. We are an important business with a very difficult job. We are here to serve the family when they lose a loved one. We're also here to serve the community as we support service clubs and community projects. J.W. Call & Son Funeral Home. A family's love is forever. A family's love is forever. From humble beginnings over 100 years ago, Community Trust Bank made a commitment to deliver quality financial products and services to our customers. Operate with fairness, respect, and integrity and support our communities. To that end, Community Trust Bank emphasizes local decision making and support for our community offices. We may have outgrown our own buildings, but we'll never outgrow our commitment to you. Commemorating 100 years, Community Trust Bank. Building communities built on trust. Microtech is now offering super fast dial-up. It's five times faster than regular dial-up, and it only costs $5 more a month, and you can try it free for five days. Call 1-866-GET-ON-IT or go to our website at microtech.com. Hello, I'm David Keene at Keene's Family Owned Homes, and this month, I've got a new 28 by 80, four bedroom, two bath, with a side to side refrigerator, built in oven, microwave, cooktop, six panel doors, big screen TV, fireplace, all the decorations on the wall for only $436 a month. That's right, just $436 a month at Keene's Family Owned Home. And if you buy before December 25th, we'll give you an extra $1,000 in Christmas cash. And welcome back to Pikeville High School. Three minutes and 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. Pikeville leading Williamsburg seven to nothing here in the opening round of the single A playoffs. As Tim Justice uh, being helped off the field there. He's, uh, I think he probably got an ankle, Charlie. Yeah, that's what it looks like, Ken, is uh, walking off very gingerly. The officials ready to get this one back in play. And 3.55 to go in the first quarter. It's Pikeville 7, Williamsburg nothing. And Williamsburg completing a couple of passes there. Uh, the quarterback draw didn't get much. And, and now they're going to take it out. It's third and three now for the Yellow Jackets. Twins each way, one back in the backfield this time. And under center will be Greer. Greer takes it. And a quick pass outside. He's got his man. He's got the first down and more. He's out across the 40 down to about the 39-yard line. That's uh, 21 on the carry again. Brett Barton. And a nice play. He just kind of took a step back, stood up, and just fired it over there to the slot. Right, an 18-yard gain for Williamsburg. First and 10 now, Williamsburg, 3.30 to play in the first quarter. And Williamsburg starting to move the football now on the Panther defense. They've got the ball at the 39-yard line. Here comes Williamsburg up. Twin split each way. This time Greer will go from the shotgun. Greer looking over the defense now, making his audible call out there. Takes the snap, and again, the quarterback draw. This time, we was, uh, Greer might have gotten a yard. Ken got down to about the 38, maybe the between the 38 and the 37-yard line. Right, not much there. Not not much of a draw on that play either. He basically just took the snap and took off up the middle there. He didn't, uh, didn't uh, make a step back. we are give him a pickup of two on the play. It'll be second and eight. And maybe trying to throw this final defense off a little bit by showing that quarterback draw here early in the ball game. Twins split each way again. Greer going out of the shotgun. Greer 
Long snap count, takes it now, looking downfield, fires it across, it's caught, and it'll be down to about the 33-yard line as number number 33, Tyler Ayers, makes the catch. And it'll be a gain of about, what, six yards on the play? Uh, mark it right at the 33, we'll give him five on the play. Third down and about four now coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. Twins split to each side. Greer again will go from the shotgun. Greer looking over the Pikeville defense as Pikeville coaching staff trying to make some adjustments. Greer steps back, looks, throws it to the backside. Knocked down, Pikeville intercepts it, and the Panthers dodge a bullet here as they have the football going back the other way as Brett Gibson comes up with the big interception. But that interception is owed to the defensive line. If somebody got penetration, got a hand up, batted the ball up in the air. So uh, good job by the Pikeville Panther defense. You know, Pikeville really, they've, uh, they've done a good job defensively. They gave up, they've given up a lot of yardage kind of on the play so far, but no nothing on the scoreboard. That's what counts. Yeah, you can give up 400 yards and uh, not live in the end zone, you're still going to win the ball game. One minute, 57 seconds to go in the first quarter now. Pikeville leads it seven to nothing, and they've got the ball back. Sword under center takes it, hands it off up the middle, and again, that is uh, Robert Shirtliff this time. He's going to pick up about nine yards on the play as he'll get up close to the 44-yard line now for the Panthers. Uh, Shirtliff now, three carries for 26 yards. And they're going to mark it right on the 44-yard line. It's going to be second down and one coming up for the Pikeville Panthers. Look for Pikeville maybe to take a chance of putting one up in the air here, Ken, as this is more or less a free play with the way they've been running the football. They do line up in the shotgun this time with Sword. Wins each way. Sword takes the snap. He's rolling out to his right, looking. Got time, throwing the ball. It's going to be caught. And again, that's Jess Parrish on the catch. He'll be down to the 40. 748 yard line that's good enough for a Pikeville first down here with 113 to play in the first quarter yes Pikeville moving the ball really well and first and 10 Pikeville they're, they're going to mark it right at the we'll call it the 44 yard line 49 49 yard, yard line I'm sorry I'm going to have to stand up 49 yard line first and 10 coming up for the Panthers 110 to go in the first quarter and Pikeville again will go with a spread offense. Twin split each way. Sword in the shotgun. Sword takes the snap, and now Sword's going to run the quarterback draw. Sword breaks the tackle, gets out across midfield down to about the 49-yard line of Williamsburg now. And looks like they're going to mark him maybe, well, on the 49-yard line, first or second down, and about seven coming up now for Pikeville. This, may, this will be the last play of the first half here, Ken, if they run one. They've got to run. They don't have enough. Well, there's no 25-second clock. I can't see my clock out there, so I don't have a clock. One wide out split each way. This time the split backfield. Yeah, the shotgun. They give it off to Shirtliff. Shirtliff trying to cut to the corner. He's going to be hit and breaks a tackle. Still on his feet down inside Williamsburg territory. Still at the 40, call it the 42-yard line. And it's going to be short of the first down, but it's going to bring up third down. And very short now for Pikeville. I think they're going to mark him. They're going to mark him at the, the 42. 42, sir. Maybe they're going to bring the chains across the measure, but that'll be the end of the first quarter. Pikeville leads it 7 to nothing. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville Methodist Hospital provides their employees the best benefits. Health insurance, dental insurance, educational assistance program, life insurance, retirement plan, 403B voluntary retirement plan, paid sick days, holiday bonus, personal day, birthday holiday, employee discounts at the cafeteria, gift shop, and several businesses, free parking, six national holidays, and long-term disability. Here are just some of the great career opportunities at the region's fastest growing medical facility. A clinical nurse specialist in nursing administration, a regular part-time patient resource counselor, occupational therapist for inpatient and outpatient rehab, physical therapist, a physical therapist assistant, assistant chief operating officer, a director of hospital education, and a director of materials management. Fact your resume to 437-9708 or apply in person on the second floor of the hospital human resources office Monday through Friday 8 to 4:30. Pikeville Methodist Hospital, East Kentucky's medical leader. Moving at the speed of life.
bus cutters. Looking smart. Cost cutters. Feeling great. Cost cutters. Having fun. Cost cutters. Knowing what matters. Cost cutters. We cut hair without cutting into your day. We are an important business with a very difficult job. We are here to serve the family when they lose a loved one. We're also here to serve the community as we support service clubs and community projects. J.W. Call & Son Funeral Home. A family's love is forever. A family's love is forever. And we're back at Pockville High School. We've completed one quarter of play here in the opening round of the playoffs. The Pockville Panthers leading seven to nothing over Williamsburg. And the Panthers uh, driving once again. They've got a uh, second or third down and uh, probably less than a yard from the Williamsburg 42 yard line. It'll be interesting, you know, look for them to probably give the ball up the middle to Charlotte for Hamilton right here. Well, Hamilton being the fullback, I would imagine might see him picking up the short yardage on this play. Third down, and they're calling it one. And it's a very short one. And waiting on the officials to get everything set. And there's the signal. We're going to go back to play here as Pipe will go out of the eye formation with one wide out split each way. Sword will get up under center. Here comes uh, Pipe will come in, or Williamsburg showing uh, that goal line defense, Pikeville takes it, hands it off up the middle, and first down and more as Hamilton will get down to about the 31-yard line where they pick up of what, uh, about 10 yards. yards. Yep. Give him a gain of 11, and it's first and 10 Panthers now with 11.54 to go in the first half, and so far Pikeville's dominating this football game, Ken. Yes, they are. And let's see, they'll send Hamilton over to the sideline this time as Sword brings the play back into the huddle. And now we're going to have another change. As, uh, looks like uh, some blood maybe on uh, Brett Gibson. He comes over to the sideline now to get looked at. 7 to nothing. Pikeville, 11.40 to go in the first half. Pikeville comes out now, twin split wide right, uh, eye formation in the backfield. Sword. Looking over the Williamsburg defense now gets set, takes his snap. He's going to pitch it back to Robinson. Weston Robinson loses some footing. He's going to lose yardage, too, as he's going to lose about four back to the 45-yard line. Yes. Robinson, uh, only his third carry on the night. He's only got uh, two yards net rushing, but uh, he's he's been the leading rusher on this team this year. He's had a, had a fine season, but... Uh, Tonight, Brenton Hamilton and uh, Robert Shirtliff did a great job out of the backfield. Hamilton with four carries for 35 yards. Uh, Shirtliff, four carries, 33 yards. Twins left, uh, split backfield this time out of the shotgun. Sword takes the snap. Uh, back got all times of time. Throws this one out, caught over by Sexton, and he'll be down to about the 26-yard line. And it'll be a gain of about uh, almost 10 yards on the play, Ken. It'll be third down and about four now coming up, or third down and a, about five coming up now for the Panthers. 10.25 to go in the half. Sword brings his play in from the sideline. Sword brings the team up the line of scrimmage now. One wide out split each way. The eye formation in the backfield. It'll be Shirtliff at the fullback. Robinson dots the eye. Sword gets set under center now. Takes the snap, and again, they give it to Robinson, and again, Robinson fights his way ahead. He might have gotten a yard, Ken, no more than that. No more than that, and I don't think he got quite a yard, so that's going to bring up a big fourth down here for the Panthers. It'll be fourth and about four. Yeah, this is four down. Long, long three. Yeah, four down territory here, though, coming up for the Pikeville Panthers. 9.40 to go, and Pikeville is going to take a timeout with 9.46 to go in the first half, leading it 7 to nothing. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. Pebble Beginnings over 100 years ago, Community Trust Bank made a commitment to deliver quality financial products and services to our customers. Operate with fairness, respect, and integrity in supporting our communities. To that end, Community Trust
Citizens Bank emphasizes local decision making and support for our community offices. We may have outgrown our old buildings, but we'll never outgrow our commitment to you. Commemorating 100 years, Community Trust Bank, building communities built on trust. Microtech is now offering super fast dial-up. It's five times faster than regular dial-up, and it only costs $5 more a month, and you can try it free for five days. Call 1-866-GET-ON-IT or go to our website at microtech.com. Hello, I'm David Keene at Keene's Family Owned Homes, and this month I've got a new 28 by 80 four-bedroom, two-bath with a side-by-side -side refrigerator, built-in oven, microwave, cooktop, six-panel doors, big-screen TV, fireplace, all the decorations on the wall for only $436 a month. That's right, just $436 a month at King's Family Owned Home. And if you buy before December 25th, we'll give you an extra $1,000 in Christmas cash. And now it's going to be fourth down and four coming up. Sword takes the snap out of the shotgun, steps up, gets hit from behind. Has a man wide open, Sexton into the end zone, touchdown, Pikeville, and a 25-yard touchdown pass from Derek Sword to Matt Sexton, and looked like he was going to get that ball knocked away, and Sexton sat down in that uh, secondary wide open, Ken. And a great job there by Derek Sword as he took quite a hit there and just released it in time right before he got hit and right on the money. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, Sword's been hot tonight. He's, uh, he's completed four out of five passes for 45 yards, including that 25-yard touchdown pass. And here comes the extra point attempt. The kick is up. It looks good from here. It is. So 14 to nothing. Pikeville leads it with 9.39 to go here in the first quarter. And Ken, uh, a big play right there coming up for the Panthers. It sure was. As, uh, Looked like, uh, looked like Sword was going to get hit there, and uh, it was fourth down and, and about four, and uh, Williamsburg would have taken over on downs. Instead, it's 14 to nothing now, the Panthers. So, uh, big play there. Fine job by Sword and, and Sexton. Sexton found a seam out there and was wide open. And uh, good job there. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some other action going on tonight, uh, Charlie. We've got uh, Bo Daniels, Chuck Scoville, and Dr. Don over at Belfry tonight as uh, Belfry hosting Kaywood in the opening round of the two-way playoffs. Uh, other local teams in the playoffs tonight, uh, Shelby Valley, uh, bless their hearts, they're at Middlesboro tonight, yeah. and uh, that's kind of going to be a tough one for them. Uh, uh, South Floyd is, uh, is at Lynn Camp tonight. I think that should be a pretty good ball game. And uh, Prestonsburg at Breathitt County ought to be a good matchup. Also on their... Uh, Local teams, uh, Sheldon Clark, playing at home tonight. They're uh, they're hosting uh, Whitesburg uh, in what should be a good matchup. So a lot of good playoff action going on around the area. And we're about ready to go back to action here as Pipe will set to kick it away, leading at 14 to nothing. And again, the short kick, it'll be taken at the 21-yard line again by Jones. Jones breaks a tackle, and there's going to be a uh, face mask call on that one, Ken, as he goes down at the 30-yard line. And Matt Jones, number 36, uh, picks up the ball at the 20-yard line, gets it up to about the 30, and we'll tack on five, maybe 15 on this one. So it'll be up to the officials to see what the call's going to be. And let's see. Five yards. Five That's yards. The okay. referee signal. So it'll move the ball up to the 36. Pretty good field position to start the drive here for Williamsburg. First and 10 from their own 36. And uh, they need to get things going if they're going to stay in this one. Already trailing 14 to nothing with nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Pieville has yet to punt the football. They've taken two drives into the end zone. Greer back to throw again, looking, rolling right, uh, throws it on the run. It's going to be incomplete. I believe it was intended over there for Tyler Ayers, number 33. They'll bring up second down and 10 now for Williamsburg. And the Williamsburg uh, Yellow Jackets... Uh, Throwing the ball well at times and then uh, not being able to complete the big plays. No, they haven't. Uh, Pikeville good, doing a good job defensively to uh, prevent uh, the big uh, big plays downfield. And again, Williamsburg will come. Trips right, one wide out left. Out of the shotgun will be Greer. Greer steps up now, takes the snap, and rolling out to his right. That's going to be a draw up the middle to the fullback, and he's still not going to get back to the line of scrimmage again, Ken. Yes, he lost his footing. He slid down. I don't think he ever was touched. And again, that was 45, Justin Tritt, and it'll bring up a third down and about 14 now coming up for Williamsburg. So Williamsburg uh, 
Just not been able to get that offense on track here so far. No, they haven't. Of course, Pine were really doing a good job. We had uh, looked at some of the stats earlier. They've had a pretty good pass defense all season. Trips right, one wide out left. And again, Greer will go out of the shotgun. Greer rolling right. He's got plenty of time this time. Steps up into the pocket. Throws it across the middle. This will be caught. But it's going to be short of the first down as he went out there to number 33. Ayers again on the catch. And it'll be up to about the 40-yard line. So it'll bring up fourth down and about six now coming up for Williamsburg. So Williamsburg will try to punt this one away. Back deep will be number two, Weston Robinson for the Panthers. And let's see, that looks like it's going to be 33 airs to punt the football away here. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half, and it's been all Panthers here as they've taken the ball uh, and two pretty good drives down the field to put it into the end zone. Yes, they have. And here comes the snap. And it's going to be this time a high floater of a kick. It'll hit takes a Williamsburg bounce down inside the 30, 25. Now they're going to mark it down at about the 24-yard line. Will be first and 10. Pike ball with 7:52 to play in the second quarter. As yeah, a pretty effective punt there. He got 36 yards on the punt with no return. Much better than that first kick. Yes. Which went, uh, went six yards and out of bounds. So, <laughs> well, you know, Pike will set the tone of this football game, really, when they had a fourth down and about four coming up and snapped the ball straight back to Benton Hamilton. And Brenton picked up the first down, and that really gave Pike well, a lot of momentum and life, and they've really uh, used that to their advantage here. Yes, they have. They actually have marked the football down at the 25-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Panthers. One wide out split wide left and a slot right. High formation in the backfield. Sword will go from under center. Sword takes it, hands it off to Robinson. Robinson makes a nice cutback. He's out in the open field. It's down to about the 40-yard line, so it'll be a 20 or a 15-yard pickup now. And it'll be first and 10 Panthers as we talked about Robinson not being able to get much back, but he got a little bit of a counter there, came back against the grain, picked up some good yardage. Right, uh, Robinson, a dangerous runner. as uh, He's got great speed. We've seen him break some big runs this year, and uh, he's got a nice one there. 15-yard pickup. First and 10 now from the 40. Pipe will go with a one wide out right, slot left, or slot right, wide out right left. And here comes the handoff to the second man through this time again. That's Robinson. Robinson's got room. This time he's out across the 30, or the 35, now the 30, and he go down to about the 29-yard line where it'll be another first down Pipe. And I tell you what, the Panthers really starting to look good now. Yes, they are. A 31-yard run for Weston Robinson. Seven minutes, 15 seconds to go here in the half, and Pikeville starting to really dominate as uh, the first two drives, you know, they, they, they played well. The first drive made a couple of big plays when they needed them. This one is so far has been just domination. Again, one wide out left, and again, this time they hand it off up the middle, this time to the fullback. Hamilton gets up to about the 25-yard line for a pickup of about four. It's going to be second and six now for the Panthers. And six, uh, six uh, just, just under seven minutes now to go here in the first half, and Pike will... Uh, maybe that size of that pipe of line start to make a difference. They are quite a bit bigger than Williamsburg. Yes, they are. They're taking advantage of it. Yep. And it'll be one wide out left. Slot right again, the eye formation. Sword takes the snap, hands it off again to Robinson. Robinson breaks a tackle, but we've got a whistle on the play, evidently. And evidently, somebody's jumped off sides, I would think. Yeah, evidently. And this time it will be the Pikeville Panthers. It'll be illegal motion, so it'll back them up five, making it uh, second down and 11 coming up now for the Panthers. Oh, back uh, about the 31-yard line. And it'll be six minutes, 10 seconds to play here in the half. Again, Pikeville leads it 14 to nothing over Williamsburg. Second down and 11 from the 31-yard line. One wide out, wide right, wide left, slot right. Again, the same eye formation. And again, they give it to Robinson. Robinson works his way, breaks a tackle, and he's still on his feet down across the 25, maybe to the 24-yard line for another gain of about six, seven yards. Nice run there by Robinson. He made a nice cut to the left there. Looked like he wasn't, wasn't going far. Made a real nice cut. Picked up six yards on the play. And it'll be third down now and about 
We'll call it third and five coming up for Pike. And here comes uh, the more of a passing set, I believe. They brought in uh, Jess Parrish. Uh, Parrish. He's one of their favorite receivers here at Pike. We're running out of the, the wide out. And he'll be wide right, one wide out left. That'll be Sexton. The eye formation. Now they're going to switch out of it. It'll be twins right, one wide. Or now it's twins left. Twins each way. And back to throw. Sword rolling to his right. Sets up throws. Going to the end zone. Touchdown, Pikeville. As this one goes to uh, Gibson. Gibson. Brett Gibson. So they're spreading the wealth around. Pikeville's Absolutely. thrown for two and rushed for one. They lead it 20 to nothing with five minutes to go in the half. Yes, it's been all Panthers here in the first half. And we talked about the Williamsburg Yellow Jacks coming here throwing the football, and Pikeville has uh, scored twice through the air here, and both pretty nice plays for Sword, too. Both of them 25-yard touchdown passes. And here comes the extra point attempt now by Pikeville. The kick is up. Belkin's kick is good. It's 21 to nothing. Pikeville, five minutes to go in the first half. We'll return in just a moment on the Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville Methodist Hospital provides their employees the best benefits. Health insurance, dental insurance, educational assistance program, life insurance, retirement plan, 403B voluntary retirement plan, paid sick days, holiday bonus, personal day, birthday holiday, employee discounts at the cafeteria, gift shop, and several businesses, free parking, six national holidays, and long-term disability. Here are just some of the great career opportunities at the region's fastest growing medical facility. A clinical nurse specialist in nursing administration, a regular part-time patient resource counselor, occupational therapist for inpatient and outpatient rehab, physical therapist, a physical therapist assistant, assistant chief operating officer, a director of hospital education, and a director of materials management. Fact your resume to 437-9708 or apply in person on the second floor of the hospital human resources office Monday through Friday 8 to 430 Pikeville Methodist Hospital East Kentucky's medical leader moving at the speed of life cost cutters looking smart cost cutters feeling great cost cutters Having fun. Cost cutters. Knowing what matters. Cost cutters. We cut hair without cutting into your day. We are an important business with a very difficult job. We're here to serve the family when they lose a loved one. We're also here to serve the community as we support service clubs and community projects. J.W. Call and Son Funeral Home. A family's love is forever. A family's love is forever. And Piper leads it 21 to nothing. Five minutes to go here in the first half. We're set to kick it off, and now the officials uh, having a discussion out here. I don't know if they're looking at the clock or what. They're going to come over and talk to Chris McNamee on the sideline, I believe. Well, they're talking well, nope. to... Uh, they're looking at Ayers, uh, checking his foot or something. May have seen some blood on his sock or something there, Ken. Sure, but uh, they're sending him off the field. As Ayers is replaced by Chase Hamlin, number 20. So it'll be Hamlin. Hill will be standing in the middle, and I think it's 26 over on the far side. Uh, well, nope, can't be. Might be 36 Jones. And here comes uh, Pikewall getting set to kick this one away. And it's going to go down the middle again, a short kick. It'll be taken at the 30-yard line by Williamsburg. And he fights his way ahead to the 40, maybe to the 41. So it'll be first and 10 Williamsburg. Let's see, that was... Uh, that was uh, Hamlin, number Hamlin. 20, Chase okay. Hamlin on the return. So Hamlin steps up and grabs the football. It'll be first and 10 Williamsburg with uh, 4.53 to go here in the half. They trail it 21 to nothing. And i tell you what, if they don't get something on the board here, Ken, this uh, could be a long night for the Yellow Jackets. Absolutely. As, uh, you're going to have to get the offense going here. Pikeville well, looking impressive on both sides of the football so far. One wide out split each way. Well, that's going to be twins split each way. They got those two slots out there. Now they've got motion coming to the near far side. 
And quickly, they're going to throw out a little flanker screen. And even if he had caught that one, Ken, it would have been down as he went to a knee to catch it. Yeah, that was a lateral anyway, so it's going to be a loss of about five yards on the play. So a mistake there by the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets, and that's Pikeville pressure starting to get to them now, I believe. I think it is. Pikeville doing a good job on both sides of the ball tonight. Second down and 15 now coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. Twin split each way this time. Uh, Greer will go from under center. He's got one back in the backfield. Greer. Takes the snap, steps up, throws it again. The ball's knocked down and intercepted again. Brett Gibson, first and 10, Pikeville at the 40. How well, about Brett Gibson? Boy, he's been in the right place at the right time tonight as another defensive lineman deflected the ball, and Gibson right there on the spot. His second interception, he just had a touchdown catch. Uh, what a game this young man's having. And Well, they're going to mark it at the... 41 yard line so still great field position this time coming up for the Panthers and this one just about put this ball game away right here Ken if one wide out split each way again the split backfield sword in the shotgun ready to throw the football and I believe we'll have all sides on that I believe so as a uh, uh, wide receiver out here uh, Tim Champlin got really anxious he took off uh, had two or three steps down the field before the yep. ball was snapped yeah that would have been the uh, Maybe, maybe there's a running head start. <laughs> but it'll cost Pikeville five. It'll bring it up first down and 15 now. And Sword comes over to the sideline. And I think uh, Coach Magnum will be calling all of his own offensive plays tonight. Maybe he's doing the offensive coordinating this season. One wide out split each way. And this time Sword will go from under center. High formation. Now they're going to shift out of that. It'll be twins right, twins left. Sword. Takes the snap, and again, this time he handed off to Robinson up the middle. Robinson breaks a tackle, gets back up to the 41, back to the original line of scrimmage for a gain of five. As Weston Robinson uh, got off to a slow start tonight after his first uh, five carries, he had, or after his first six carries, Charlie, he had three yards rushing. Uh, to this point now, he's had 10 carries, and he's got 60 yards, so uh, he's really done a fine job the last four carries. Been pretty impressive here, and uh, especially in this second quarter, as Pipe will really run the ball well here. One wide out, split wide right, slot left, or slot right, wide out left. And again, this time the handoff to Robinson up the middle. Robinson squirts through. He'll get up to the 40 or 35, maybe 36 yard line. It'll be a third down situation now coming up for Pipe. Third and about six, I believe. Clock running, three minutes, 12 seconds to go in the first half. And I'll tell you what, speaking of that clock, Pipe was really dominated the time of possession in this football game. Oh, they certainly have. And this time it'll be, well, they're going to switch, shift out of that. It'll be one wide out right, one left in the I formation. And again, they hand it off up the middle. This time Hamilton is bowling over people, gets down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line, first and 10 Panthers. An 11-yard pickup for Brenton Hamilton. Hamilton now with 50 yards rushing on the night on only six carries. I'll tell you what, Hamilton really just uh, running over people up the middle of that time, and really Pikeville's size really starting to show now. First and 10 now at the 24-yard line, eye formation, one wide out each way. Sword. And we're going to have motion, uh, maybe offsides on the I defense. I think it's going to be offsides on the defense as uh, number 51 jumped across the line of scrimmage, made contact. That's Andrew Middleton. Yeah, that's going to shorten the field for Pikeville even more. It'll be first and five now from the 19-yard line. You know, look for Pikeville really to start going uh, with the big backs out of the backfield as they've got uh, Hamilton in it to fullback and Shirtlip running the tail. So look for some power football coming here out of Pikeville. And again, they give it to Brenton Hamilton, and Brenton goes down inside the 10-yard line to about the nine for another Pikeville first down. Another gain of about 10 yards. Yeah, they spot it right on the 10, so it'll be first and goal there for the Panthers. And Pikeville don't look for them to put the football in there on this drive here, Ken, as they've got the two big men running out of the backfield. Sword will go from under center. He'll have one wide out each way. And this time the handoff uh, 
takes it up on Sword. Sword takes it into the end zone from 10 yards out. Pikeville, 27. Williamsburg, zero. So the Panthers look like they're back in uh, the old form, Ken, as they're starting to really dominate in this playoff sure game. They they're looking great. And I'll tell you what happened there. Uh, Derek Sword dropped the snap. Dropped it on the ground, picked it up, and uh, just took off up the middle with it. Good job by Derek Sword. And Kept again, composure to... and uh, got it in there. Elkins ready to attempt the extra point yet again to make it 28 0. 159 to go here in the half. Kick is up. It looks good. It is 20, 28 0. Pikeville with 159 to go here in the first half and uh, uh, a dominating performance here coming from the Pikeville Panthers. Well, it sure is, as they have just really, really been impressive so far tonight. They've, uh, like I said earlier, they've dominated both sides of the ball. They've held this. Uh, great Williamsburg passing attack down uh, scoreless here in the first half with under two minutes to go. And uh, I think Pikeville's had the ball four times, Charlie. They scored four touchdowns. Yes, sir. Uh, Kicked all four extra points. Been good. They're just, just playing really well. Well, that's true. You know, we uh, we talked about it. It looked like they were going to be stopped for that first drive of the night. Picked up the first down there on the uh, fake punt, and it just haven't looked back since. And matter of fact, I don't think they've been in a fourth down situation since. I don't think so since that, that opening one. And, uh, oh, yeah, they did. They went. They had a fourth down down here earlier here in the second half down inside the 30-yard line. But uh, Pivel really just uh, dominating the ball, especially well through on the ground and through the air is they're really the team putting up the uh, aerial numbers tonight. Right. Uh, they've got 70 yards passing. Uh, Williamsburg with only 47 to this point. Ball picked up at about the 24-yard line this time by Williamsburg and bringing it out to about the 35-yard line will be was at uh, 22 on the carry. That was uh, William Renfro. And first and 10 now from the 35-yard line coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jack. It's only a minute 53 to go here in the first half. And uh, we talked about being put, I think Bible tried to put them away early in this one. Twin split each way. Greer will go from under center. Greer getting set, and we're going to have a flag on the playoff. It's going to be delay a game or two well, men on the field. Uh, yep, illegal substitution against Pyle. Right, as we saw uh, number 55 there, the Panthers, uh, Will Lockhart uh, running, trying to get off the field right there, right before he's ready to snap the ball. So it's a five-yard penalty. It'll be right on the 40-yard line now, first and five for Williamsburg. One wide twin split each way, one back in the backfield. And Greer again, pump fakes this time, looking. Now he stepped back in the pocket, rolling, throws it out to his relief valve. It's going to be caught over there and cutting back against the green. He's got some room now. Ken comes back across the 40 down to about the 42-yard line. He ran a lot of yards there to pick up two. Pick up two yards on the play. And that was 33. Tyler Ayers on the carry. He ran about 35, 40 yards to pick up two. As yeah, Andy Greer wanted to go downfield on that, but uh, great coverage back there by the Panthers. He just didn't have anywhere to go with it. Greer rolling out now on his right, pumping again. Pumps, pulls up, comes up close to the line of scrimmage, throws it on the run. It's going to be incomplete. Intended over there on the far side. Is that... Uh, Ayers again, I can see a three. We had a, a light flag come in over there, and I'm not sure if maybe they hit uh, Greer after they threw the ball or what happened, but uh, going to have some kind of personal foul, I'm sure, after the play. And here comes the official. Unsportsmanlike on Pikeville, so that's going to cost them uh, 15 yards. That's a big penalty right there. Yes, it is. Would have had them uh, third and a long five. But now it'll be first and 10, and it'll move the ball down to, what, the 45-yard line? Yes, yeah, they walk it off. And it'll move the ball into Bible territory now, first and 10. Whoa, at the 42-yard line, as it's from the point of the foul. And that's a big penalty right there for Pike. Well, 17-yard penalty. Trips left, one wide out right, one man in the backfield. Greer getting set in the shotgun. Takes the snap, rolling, and Greer has all kinds of time this time. Steps up. Now he's going to come back against the grain. He's going to roll back. Throwing, got a man open. It's going to be caught over here, and down inside the 30, 20, 
10, down about the nine yard line is number 13, Will Hill, and Hill has it first and goal now coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets, and a nice job there by Greer to really buy some time in the backfield. It sure was. Yeah, that's the first time we've seen uh, Hill catch the ball tonight, his first reception, and it's, it's a big one. It goes for uh, 33 yards. Okay, uh, we got a timeout on the field. We're going to keep it right here, Ken, 56 seconds to go in the first half, and Williamsburg really threatening here as this is the first time they've been this deep in Pikeville territory all, after, all evening, and really got to give Hill, man, he made some nice cuts after he got the football that time. Uh, yes, he did. A nice run. Is that he thought he might try to go the outside, but he turned it up, went up the middle of the field, up the, and uh, did a good job running with the ball. Showed some good quickness. Good job avoiding that rush there. So he rolled back, rolled, went all the way to the right, rolled all the way back to the left, and made the pass. Uh, kind of looked like Chaz Harmon out there on that. Yeah, uh, Charlie. He, he saw him, a uh, great painful quarterback, graduated a couple years ago. It's uh, just a tremendous scrambler. Twins split each way. This time Greer will go from under center. One back in the backfield, Greer gets set. Again, the quick step, he's going for the corner. It's gonna be, he, I think he's he gonna say he it. caught it, but he's gonna be short of the goal line. It's gonna be a gain of about eight yards down to the one yard line. That was a nice grab over there, Ken. Is that, that sure uh, was, that's uh, 33. That's Ayers, I Ayers, believe. yep. And right, they're gonna say really between oh, the one and the goal line. Just short of the goal line. So first and goal now from the one yard, or second and goal from the one yard line coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. And now Williamsburg gonna go to the full house backfield to hand it off to the second man through. Touchdown, Williamsburg. And the Jackets are on the board here. Ken, I'm not sure who was it on the carry. Was it, was uh, it, uh, I believe it was Hill that took it in. Hill? Uh, and they're gonna give the ball, give the call to Hill and he picks up the one foot touchdown, I guess we'll call it, as he didn't have far to go, but uh, Something you don't see very often is a team like Williamsburg going out of that uh, full house backfield. Uh, not, not very often, but uh, when it's uh, second down and, and an inch and a half to go, well, I guess that's, that's, that's a pretty, pretty way, good way to do it. And they're going to go for two. Go for two from that same full house backfield. And again, this time rolling out, throwing to the corner. It's going to be incomplete, but we've got a flag on the play. They're definitely going to have pass interference on that one as uh, Weston Robinson over here with uh, contact early, well before the ball got there. Ball intended over there for Renfro, and it'll be incomplete, so they'll move it to the one and a half yard line and try it again here for Williamsburg. 28 to six right now, 45 seconds to play in the half as the Panthers giving up their first touchdown on the evening here with only seconds to go in the first half. And again, the wishbone formation. Greer takes the snap, quickly throws it across the middle. He's going to be caught, and the extra point is good as uh, Ayers on the reception. 49 seconds to go here in the first half, and Williamsburg on the board, 28 to 8. And I'll tell you what, he has just got a real nice uh, quick release on that football, doesn't he? Yes, he has. He's, uh, he's very accurate. In fact, uh, to talk about Andy Greer and what he did last week was uh, somewhat phenomenal as they uh, defeated Harlan 63 to 29. Greer tied the state record with nine touchdown passes in the game. He uh, completed 23 out of 30 passes for over 460 yards, and uh, that's why it, I'm, I'm sure Coach McNamee don't don't feel like this game's over. Oh no, uh, you got a potent offense like this Williamsburg team. Uh, uh, like I said last week, they put up 63 points on the board, so uh, they showed there they they got the ball with less than two minutes to go here in the in the half, and they take it down the field and. Uh, and that's uh, still 40, what, 49, 45 seconds yeah. left on the clock. So uh, just a little over a minute, they yeah. take it about uh, 60 yards and, and score a touchdown. So uh, they are a dangerous team offensively. But if Pikeville can continue to uh, control the line of scrimmage and uh, keep this ground attack going, and, and of course, Sword's been tremendous tonight throwing the ball. Uh, if they can keep their offense uh, going like they are, they're, they're not going to have anything to worry about. Well, you know, if you're a pilot well, right now, the offense is probably your best defense because they're keeping Williamsburg off the field and eating up as much clock as possible. Here comes the kick. It's the onside kick by Williamsburg. Ball still loose, and still I think loose. Williamsburg may have it. It's still loose. I don't know who's got it. Everybody has it. Pitewell has it, I believe. I think he's. 
I think he went ahead and made the signal. The officials pointed toward Pikeville's uh, end of the football field, but that one was a hot potato. Oh, he just kept uh, scribbling along. He thought Pikeville had it, and then they lost it. Thought Williamsburg had it, and it came out again, and then the Panthers uh, recovered. But uh, we look like they're backing like they're it up here. It over we had a, uh, had a penalty. Hmm. Uh, well, the ball went to require 10 yards. I do know that. Maybe the officials, I didn't see a flag. They're saying that was so much fun to watch. Let's we'll do it again. again. Yeah. Well, they're, they're spotting it back on the uh, 40, so there's no uh, no penalty. What? Uh, I don't know what happened there. Unless they... Uh, yeah. The play didn't take play. They must have must have blown a whistle to stop the play right before it was kicked, huh. and, and not due to a flag. Uh, it must have been some other reason that they they stopped play. Well, do you think everybody's looking for an onside kick uh, here now? That could be. <laughs> 48.2 seconds back on the clock now, as the officials are ready to get set again. I'm not sure who ended up with the football. I think Pitewell well, might have had it at last there, but. Uh, here comes uh, Williamsburg now, setting the football back up. 48.2 seconds to go in the half, 28 to eight. Pike will buy 20. And here it is again, and again, this time it's gonna be the little pooch kick. It'll be taken, it'll go out of bounds now for Williamsburg at about the 31 yard line. So that'll move the ball up to the 35, I believe. Is that where they in high school? I believe it's the 40. 40 in high school. High school so. Now they're going to save the 35 according to the oh, okay. PA announcer. So it'll be first and 10 pike, although with only 48.2 uh, seconds to go here in the half. I would look for Pike to uh, take a knee and go in with the 20 point lead here. No, I don't know. They you never know. They are going to spot it out at the uh, four. Well, the officials, uh, they don't know where they're going to spot it. They're trying to decide now where to go with it. Ones keep saying it's back at the 35. And then, oh, the 40, let's see. We'll be on the 35. Yeah. So I don't feel too bad about not being sure where it went, Charlie. That's the exactly officials right. out here didn't, didn't know. You don't even have a wide hat on, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> One wide out split each way, the eye formation for Pike. Sword will go under center. And now we're going to have a timeout here. Williamsburg. Time out Williamsburg. And we'll take a break and be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. Over one hundred years ago, Community Trust Bank made a commitment to deliver quality financial products and services to our customers. Operate with fairness, respect, and integrity and support our To that end, Community Trust Bank emphasizes local decision making and support for our community offices. We may have outgrown our old buildings, but we'll never outgrow our commitment to you. Commemorating 100 years, Community Trust Bank, building communities built on trust. Microtech is now offering super fast dial-up. It's five times faster than regular dial-up, and it only costs $5 more a month, and you can try it free for five days. Call 1-866-GET-ON-IT or go to our website at microtech.com. Hello, I'm David Keene at Keene's Family Owned Homes, and this month I've got a new 28 by 80, four-bedroom, two-bath, with a side-by-side -side refrigerator, built-in oven, microwave, cooktop, six-panel doors, big-screen TV, fireplace, all the decorations on the wall, for only $436 a month. That's right, just $436 a month The Keene's family owned home. And if you buy before December 25th, we'll give you an extra $1,000 in Christmas cash. Panthers with 48 seconds and they're gonna hand it off up the middle and this time it's Shirtless. Shirtless will pick up about nine yards up to about the 43, 44 yard line and that's gonna, now Pike was gonna call a timeout and stop the clock here with 41 seconds to go in the half, Ken. Yes, uh, they wanna try to get some more points on the board evidently by taking this timeout. I, I didn't think they'd take a knee to, as effective as this running game's been. I thought they'd, uh, you know, like they did like they did, they'd pop it up the middle and hope maybe they'd break one. But uh, so they did, they, they picked up uh, eight yards on the play and uh, they figure why not uh, stop the clock and see what they can come up with on this next play. Look for him to try to get, maybe get the ball to Weston Robinson here. He's got that breakaway speed, and I'm sure they'd like to see him uh, get one of those big holes up the middle and be able to break it. That's very possible. Uh, only 41 ticks left here in the first half, but Pike will ready to go back at it. Williamsburg uh, in no hurry to get started here. Robinson at the tailback now, shirt sure. the fullback in the high formation. One wide out split each way. Sword takes the snap, and again, the handoff to Shirtliff up the middle. Shirtliff carrying people down the field. He gets the first down down to about the 
46-47 yard line, and that'll stop the clock now while they move the chains, and Pike will go ahead and take the time out here. Only 35 seconds now to go in the first half. Pike will uh, pick up some yardage here on these first couple of plays here in this 48-second segment, segment of the ball game. Yes, they are. Sure. Uh, the Paintsville Tigers uh, tonight, we didn't, didn't mention them. Okay. They ended up the fourth seed in this district there at uh, Somerset tonight. And uh, uh, the winner of uh, winner of this game uh, will more than likely uh, be awarded with a trip to Somerset next Friday night. And uh, Somerset a fine, fine football team year in and year out, Charlie. They've got a great program over there. You know, they won, won the district again. And, you know, the Briar Jumpers, I think they are down there again in Somerset. And I tell you what, uh, they really uh, they put, they put a beating on this uh, Williamsburg team here back in, during this regular season. And Pike will ready to come back up the line of scrimmage here with 35 seconds to go in the half. Looks like they're going to line up with Twins right and going to go out of the shotgun. Uh, passing look. Sword takes the snap. He's back to throw. Williamsburg coming after him. He throws it out there. It's going to be incomplete over here. He tipped it. Did it for Matt Sexton. That'll bring up a second down and 10, Pikeville. 25 seconds left in the half. That's only the second incompletion for Derek Sword tonight. He's now five out of seven for 70 yards and two touchdowns. Very efficient first half. Second down and 10 coming up for the Panthers here. And, uh, you know, Pikeville looking to try to get some more points on the board to increase that lead. They've got it 28 to 8 now. And they're going to go out of the passing set again. One wide out left, slot right. And Sword again, back to throw. Got Tab all day. Now steps up, delivers. It's going to be incomplete, almost intercepted. Two, as Two players had a shot at intercepting that. Well, is that, uh, is that 21? It went, it went on initially, uh, went went off the hands of uh, number 29, which we don't I don't have on my right eyes. I was just looking. And then number 21, Brett, uh, Brett Barton had a had a clear shot at it, and he dropped the ball. So, so it'll be third down and 10 now coming up for the Panthers. They're going to go back to that uh, I formation, one wide out split each way this time. Sword will go from under center. Yeah, and they might keep it on the ground this time. Yeah, Charlie. that was dangerous right yeah. there. Uh, they, they just certainly don't want to throw one and have it to have it ran back the no. other way. So. You know, that, would, that would really defeat what you've done here in this first half as they've dominated, uh, well, 90% of the first half has been all Pike. Well, that one drive is all Williamsburg's been able to muster here on the, on the Panthers. And I don't know what's going on now. The official's going over talking to the Williamsburg coach. And uh, did he throw that little red flag out there so they can go over and uh, view the tape on the sideline? <laughs> <laughs> Shane, you have to roll it back up there for them. Do an instant replay for them. And we're about ready to go back to play as the man in the white hat is coming back out to, to well, nope. He's going to come over here and, uh, well, yeah, he's going to go back. I thought he was going to want to talk to Coach Mack to me for a minute. And one wide out split each way, the eye formation in the backfield. Sword hands it off again. Nope. Yeah, up the middle, that's Robert Shirtless. Shirtless did a good job hiding that football kid. They get up to about the 42-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about uh, six yards on the play, would you say? Uh, yes, it is. Five yards yeah. anyway, so. Fourth down and four, and Pike will let the clock run out. They'll go into the half with the big lead, 28 to eight. And we'll be back with some halftime comments and statistics in just a moment on the Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville Methodist Hospital provides their employees the best benefits. Health insurance, dental insurance, educational insurance, retirement plan, 403B voluntary retirement plan, paid sick days, holiday bonus, personal day, birthday holiday, employee discounts at the cafeteria, gift shop, and several businesses, free parking, six national holidays, and long-term disability. Here are just some of the great career opportunities at the region's fastest growing medical facility. A clinical nurse specialist in nursing administration. A regular part-time patient resource counselor. Occupational therapist for inpatient and outpatient rehab. Physical therapist. A physical therapist assistant. Assistant chief operating officer. A director of hospital education and a director of materials management. Fact your 
resume to 437-9708 or apply in person on the second floor of the hospital human resources office Monday through Friday 8 to 430. Pikeville Methodist Hospital, East Kentucky's medical leader. Moving at the speed of life. Cost cutters. Looking smart. Cost cutters. Feeling great. Cost cutters. Having fun. Cost cutters. Knowing what matters. Cost cutters. We cut hair without cutting into your day. We are an important business with a very difficult job. We are here to serve the family when they lose a loved one. We're also here to serve the community as we support service clubs and community projects. J.W. Call & Son Funeral Home. A family's love is forever. A family's love is forever. Back to Pikeville High School, 28 to 8. Your score here at the half as the Pikeville Panthers uh, looking pretty impressive there in the first half. Ken, they dominated uh, most of the first half, really only one drive. Uh, Williamsburg, that last drive they were able to mount. Other than that, it was all Pikeville. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, very impressive defensively and offensively were the Panthers and uh, played well on special teams. And very good performance. Uh, we're going to run down some individual stats here before we uh, start the second half. Uh, first of all, for Williamsburg, uh, quarterback Andy Greer completed eight out of 13 passes for uh, 90 yards, and he had two interceptions, uh, no touchdown passes. Uh, Cheston Trett had one carry on the ground for a minus three yards, and uh, Will Hill, one carry for one yard and a touchdown, scored the lone touchdown. Uh, on the receiving end for Williamsburg, Brett Barton, two catches for 28 yards. Will Hill, one for 33 yards. And Tyler Ayers had uh, five catches, 29 yards in the first half. And for the Pikeville Panthers, uh, very impressive offensively in the first half. Quarterback Derek Zorda, fine half, as he uh, completed five out of seven passes, two of those for touchdowns, both of them 25-yard touchdown passes. Uh, one of those was to uh, uh, Brett Gibson for 25, and then Matt Sexton also caught a 25-yard touchdown pass. Uh, Sexton, two catches on the night for a total of 34 yards. Jess Parrish, two catches for 11. And uh, Gibson, the one catch for 25 yards and the touchdown. On the ground, uh, they were led in rushing by Weston Robinson as he really came on in that second quarter, had a great second quarter. He ended up the half with 11 carries for 65 yards. Uh, Brenton Hamilton, seven carries, 59 yards, and Robert Shirtless, seven carries for 56 yards. So Pike were very effective on the ground and through the air, Charlie. Well, I will have the football here to start the second half as they kicked off to Williamsburg to open the football game in Williamsburg. Uh, Right now, we've got to find some way to stop this Pikeville offense. This Pikeville really just uh, punted, the foot, well, they haven't punted the football on the evening, have they? Uh, no, they haven't. Uh, took him four, had, had the ball five times, and scored on four of those. The fifth one, they happened to run out of the clock in the second half, or second quarter. And it looks like Williamsburg ready to kick it away. Back deep will be... Useless. So let's see, that's number, is that number one? Jacob Sword back. It's an onside, onside kick. kick. And let's see who has it. Pikeville, Pikeville, I believe, has it. Brandon yeah. Hamilton pulled it in. And Pikeville uh, will have it first and 10 now at about the 47-yard line. So the Panthers got a great field position here on the onside's kick. Yes, they do. And Pikeville first and 10 at the 47-yard line is where they're going to finally mark the football. Let's see if the Panthers will come back out with that running game that's been so effective here in the first half. One wide out split each way. Sword will go from under center. Shirtliff the fullback. They give it to Robinson. Robinson squirts out across the midfield stripe down to about the 49-yard line for a gain of about four yards to start this second half. Mike will uh, line, just lining up out of that eye formation, letting the letting Bob Shirtliff uh, lead through, or Robert Shirtliff, I guess. His dad, I guess we, we want to be called Bobby. And, and his grandfather, he's Bob Shirtliff the third. 
One wide out to uh, split each way for Pikeville. High formation. Sword will go from under center. Sword takes a snap, hands it off to Shirtliff. Shirtliff runs through the line of scrimmage. He's got across the 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Pikeville, as Robert Shirtliff takes it in from 49 yards out to give Pikeville the lead of 34 to 8 now. And Shirtliff, the big man, showing a lot of speed up the middle that time. He sure did. Once he got through the line of scrimmage there, he was gone. And, you know, nobody from Williamsburg able to run him down from behind. And I tell you what, as strong as Shirtliff is, you'd have had to hit him hard because he had been a hard man to bring down at that, at that point. 49-yard touchdown for Robert Shirtliff. And the kick is blocked. It'll be no good. So 34-8, to eight, Pikeville on top here. 11-15 to go in the first or the third quarter is that was a short, short drive, Ken. What, uh, two plays took 45 seconds off the clock? That's, that's all it took. Two plays, 45 seconds, and six points on the board. So Pikeville really up big now, 34-8. And just when Williamsburg, you know, may have thought they had a chance coming out here in the second half, Pikeville's coming back and showing the uh, the strength of the Pikeville teams of old is they are really uh, dominating this ball game now. And, uh, and that's with a capital capital D, too, I guess you would say, because they have held this uh, potent offense of Williamsburg down all evening. They sure have. And uh, we got a couple of scores there at halftime as uh, Belfry uh, leading Kaywood uh, 40, I believe it said 40 to nothing. And uh, Prestonsburg uh, over at Breathitt County, leading Breathitt County 13 to 6. Yeah, impressive there as uh, both ways. Belfry, impressive Belfry put them kind of numbers up because, you know, where they run that just a straight running offense, they don't usually put that kind of score up on anybody. Usually not, but they must be really lighting it up tonight. And here's the kick. It'll be kicked short. It'll be picked up at about the 25 yard line, maybe the 26 by Williamsburg up to about the 29. Let's see. Jones on the return. It'll be first and 10. Williamsburg at the 29 to go in the third quarter. And yeah, they've got to put points on the board here. Just, uh, just as simple as that. After, I would say I'd look for Williamsburg to go to the air, but they've only carried the ball on the ground twice tonight. So they, they've been going to the air all night. Yeah, it may, they, may surprise them all, all season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Cripps left. One wide out right and one back in the backfield. Back to throw is Williamsburg, and the man got a man open over here. I'm caught at the 30-yard line. Football is loose, and did he get out of bounds? No, it did not. Pikeville picks up the fumble, so it's first and 10 Panthers at the 36. So when the ball bounces your way, it bounces your way. Pikeville has had a couple of lucky breaks today to go along with some great football. Yes, they have, and uh, just able to recover it before it rolls out of bounds. You know, you, if you're watching that football, it, like somebody, uh, like a golf shot, had some reverse English on it, just kind of just laid there. Right. So great field position for the Panthers. First and ten from the Williamsburg 35-yard line. So first and ten from the 35 again. Sword takes it, hands it off to Shirtliff up the middle, and Shirtliff is going to get ahead for a gain of about three, maybe down to about the 30, 32-yard line. So it'll be second down and seven coming up for the Panthers. 10.45 to go now in the third quarter, and uh, I don't know if you can Pible. I know Williamsburg can store quickly, but if I will put six more up on the board, then it's just about, you just better turn the lights out on this one. I'd say you can. Eye formation, and again, this time the handoff to Robinson, and Robinson gets down close to the 30-yard line for a gain of about two. It'll bring up a third down and five coming up for the Panthers here. As the interior defense looking a little better on this series for uh, Williamsburg. As the Yellow Jackets uh, feeling the sting of the Panthers so far. Well, they sure are. <laughs> yes. Third and five now for the Panthers. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. And one wide out each way now for Pikeville. Eye formation in the backfield. And sword. Takes a snap, and this time again, hands it off to Robinson, and Robinson might have gotten a yard, no more than that. It's going to pick up a fourth down and about four now coming up for the Pikeville Panthers, and, yeah, I look for them to go for it here, Ken. They're down deep in Williamsburg territory here. I don't see any chance of them put, putting this football. No, not at this position on the field. The ball's the 29-yard line. If you put it in, they only get nine yards net on it, so uh, 
got to go for it from here unless you got a field goal kicker that can kick it about a 48 yard or 47. There is one in Bible, but uh, he wears uh, the orange of the Bible College Bears. <laughs> One wide out each way again for Pikeville. Single coverage out there on those two wide outs. And I'm not sure that's a wise decision right now. As we've got the officials coming back out to make some kind of signal into the to the referee. And I guess we're going to go back to play. I don't know if must not have the ball sitting in the right spot. And Pikeville is going to go this time with uh, one wide out, wide right, one wide left. Sword under center takes it and he's going to run the option. Sword pitches it out on the outside to Robinson. Robinson breaks a tackle and finally gets brought down short of the first down at about the 30 or 25 yard line, 24 yard line. But there's a flag, down, a flag on down on the near side of the field here and uh, didn't see what happened. I believe that may be illegal motion or maybe an illegal shift uh, against the Panthers. There was a lot of motion coming over on this side. Yep, illegal shift out of pike. Well, it'll come. So they'll uh, decline the penalty if they have that option and take the football, I would think. And they evidently do. So Williamsburg declines. Uh, they'll take over on downs. And it'll be first and 10 for Williamsburg at the 28-yard line. And you talk about dodging a bullet there. As potent as this Pikeville offense has been, they were lucky to come out of that without giving up another six points. They sure was. As that was Pikeville's best field position of the night, and that's the only time they haven't scored uh, other than when the clock ran out on them in the first half. Cripps left, one wide out right. Greer will go out of the shotgun. Greer, and he's going to hand it off up the middle on the draw and out to about the 31-yard line on the carry. Let's see, is that... Uh, that's uh, number 45. 45. Uh, Let me find him. It's Justin. Justin Trett. Trett. I haven't seen much of him tonight. No, we haven't. That's his second carry. <laughs> One wide out split each way again now for Williamsburg. And the wishbone formation in the backfield. So looks like an uh, interesting look out of Williamsburg. And it's going to be the quick pass. That ball again batted down at the line of scrimmage. It'll be incomplete. Ball tipped, it'll be third down and about eight now coming up for Williamsburg. I'll tell you what, Pikeville defensive line doing a great job coming inside and getting those hands up and, and slapping that football down. They are, and, and uh, two of those uh, big deflections tonight have been on, on quick passes, too. He's just taking one or two step drop and uh, firing the ball, and Pikeville getting there quickly, getting those hands up, doing a great job. And again, Williamsburg this time will go with the empty backfield, trips left, wins right. And Greer will go from under center. Greer takes it, quick pass out to the outside and trying to get it into the, one of the running back's hands. And he's got, uh, did he go out of bounds? Yep, looks like he went out of bounds at about the 34-yard line, if that's, uh, that's Will Hill. Official. Yep. Will, Will Hill, Hill fell short. He did. Let's see where they're going to spot it. It's a 34-yard line, so he picked up uh, three yards on the play. So it's going to be fourth down and about five coming up now for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. 8-16 to play in the third quarter. And it looks like they're going to have to give the football back to the Pikeville Panthers. And it looks like it'll be back deep uh, is Robinson and Sexton back deep for the Panthers now. Uh, barring a fake uh, punt here and I wouldn't expect that out of Williamsburg. And that ball again shanked out to the outside and I don't know, maybe they, sh maybe they should be running the football on fourth down again because they have not punted it well at all. Not at all. Had one good punt on the night. And that's Andy Greer, the uh, quarterback, doing the punting. So, Pike, well, once again, great field position. They take over at the Williamsburg 43-yard line with eight minutes, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Panthers already up 34-8. to eight. And I'll tell you what, uh, Pike, well, again, you know, one more score at this point in the ball game could could just about lock it up for them, especially the way their defense has played this after, this evening. Again, one wide out each way. Sword takes it, hands it off to Robinson, and Robinson eh, may have got a couple on the. Yeah, they're going to say he got up to the 40 yard line, so a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven now, with eight minutes to go in the third quarter of what has been a dominant performance by the Pikeville Panthers. It sure has. Their defense has played, uh, well, they're, they're just hitting on all cylinders. Defense has shut down Williamsburg, and the offense has uh, moved the football all over the field. 
Second and seven now. Sword's going to line up under center. He's got a, the I formation behind him. One wide out split each way. Sword takes the snap, and again, he's going to run the option. Gives it loose to Shirtliff on the so, give up the middle. So give him a Hamilton. Oh, is it Hamilton? He had Shirtliff at the tailback position. Okay. Gave it off to Hamilton. No gain on the play. Yep. Yeah, let's gonna, see. They're going to give him give him one yard on the play yep. down to the 39. It'll bring up a third down and about six. We'll, we'll call it third down and six now for the Pikeville Panthers. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Pikeville in no hurry now. They're letting that clock run as uh, that's going to be their ally for the rest of the day, the rest of the evening here. One wide out again each way. Sword will go from under center. Takes the snap and fakes it. He's under pressure, rolling, gets rid of it. It's going to be caught over there. And again, let's see, is that uh, Shirtliff. Shirtliff? So Robert Shirtliff will get it up to about the 35-yard line. That's going to be short of the first down, but it'll be fourth and about two, I guess, coming up now for Piger. And well, it's probably right on the 36, so uh, only a three-yard gain. It'll leave fourth and three. And again, Pipe will go for it here on this position of the football field. One wide out each each way. Split backfield this time as Sword will go from under center. Sword, long snap count, trying to draw Williamsburg off sides. And now they'll call the timeout and bring the punting unit in. 6.08 to go in the third quarter, 34 to 8. Pike will we'll be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. Down Pike as he gets down to about the 32-yard line. Ken, looks like he's going to get it by about a yard. Yeah. Good. Good hard running off the right side once again by Robert Shirtliff. He picks up four yards and another Pikeville first down. Six minutes, two seconds now to go in the third quarter of play. Pikeville leading at 34 to 8. Uh, and, you know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you can use all kinds of adjectives as Pikeville is playing very well here this, this evening. High formation again. Sword gives it. Nope. Yeah, gives it to Shirtliff. A nice, nice handoff up the middle there. Shirtliff's going to get down across the 30 to about the 28 yard line. Well, now they're going to save the 29. So it'll be a gain of three. Second down and seven. Shirtliff, 11 carries, 115 yards on the night. Having a great game. Well, that's pretty impressive. Is how many? How many does Robinson have? Uh, Robinson's got 77 yards on 16 carries. And uh, Brenton Hamilton, 60 yards on only eight carries. So uh, quite a ground attack tonight by the Panthers. Again, one wide out each way. Sword hands it off up the middle to Shirtliff. Shirtliff running over people down inside the 20, call it the 20, or 16 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Michael as Robert Shirtliff starting to dominate this football game from the fullback position. He sure is. 12 yards on that carry for Shirtliff. As the Panthers threaten again. They're down to the Williamsburg 16. Five minutes, 10 seconds and counting as the, the third quarter winding down here. Pike will go out of that I-4 split each way. Single coverage on Sexton over on the left side. And now they have motion going back to the left. And it's time the ball loose over on the field. And I believe Williamsburg may have come up with the loose ball. Trying to get, go to the well one time too many there, Ken. Uh, I think it was going to, was it Sherlock? I think so. And, uh, I don't know, it looked like he maybe he was trying to pull the ball back or they were unsure, kind of running the option there, but uh, ball pops out and Williamsburg recovers. A big break there for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. They'll have it first and 10 at the seven yard line. So a uh, tough situation here for them as they've got their back against the wall. And Greer goes into the shotgun, trips right, one wide out left. And he's going to have offsides, I believe, on Pike. Well, as he may have, he, somebody jumped. Whether or not he was drawn off will be the question. And here comes the official to give us the explanation. It'll be offsides on the defense. It'll be first down and five now coming up for Williamsburg. Five-yard penalty for jumping. You know, David Lee Roth could never play football. Well, that's exactly right. a lot of penalties. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that, that, would, that would be tough. Trips left, one wide out right. Crips right, one wide out left. I'm sorry. Back to throw is Williamsburg. Greer has a man. It's caught, and he falls ahead to about the 15-yard line, I think. So it'll be a gain of about three. And I'm not sure who the receiver was. That was uh, Ayers. Ayers, 33. It's, it'll be second down now and short. Second down and call it uh, one coming up now for Williamsburg. 
Williamsburg really need to get something going here in a hurry as the clock running quickly. Twin split each way. Greer in the shotgun. Greer takes the snap now, looking. Now he's unsure. He's being chased, and he... Oh, nice tackle oh, back there tackle. by Pikeville. Who was that that pulled him down, Ken? Number 68 for Pikeville. Jeremy Cockoff. <laughs> Josh Sullivan, I believe. Oh, that was Sullivan again. Sullivan got the got the sack early in the game. That big sack there is... That's uh, a The loss of about, what, uh, 15 yards on... No. Uh, Right close to 15 yards on the play. My, my, what a loss. It's going to be third and a bunch now coming up for Williamsburg. Greer standing in his own end zone now to take this snap on the shotgun. Trips left, one wide, trip right, one wide out left. Greer rolling to it. It's going to be incomplete. He just had to get rid of that one as he was under a ton of pressure. And it'll be fourth down and 14 now coming up for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. And i tell you what, with an anemic, the anemic punting game they have had tonight, this is not a situation you want to be in. No, it's not. And the question is, Pyball, you would think, will try to set up a return here and hope that he gets a punt away like he's got done so far. And here comes uh, Williamsburg now getting set. There's the snap. And he gets away a decent punt this time. It takes a Pikeville bounce, though, bounces back inside the 25, and they'll down it at about 22, 23 yard line, so Pikeville will come up with great field position again. They sure will. That was uh, Brett Barton uh, punting that time. I don't know. I don't know if he punted earlier in the game, I, and then uh, I think I think he did, and then Greer on the last time uh, uh, punted, but. Uh, I guess they're just trying to find somebody that can uh, get a decent punt off. They yeah. really struggled all night with that. And one good kick all night. Yeah, you know, that that one got him out a little bit, but he's still not very much breathing room now. One wide out split each way. Pipe will shift out of that go twin split each way. And Sword will go into the shotgun. Robinson the single back, and they'll hand it to Robinson out of the backfield. Robinson, in, well, fights his way ahead. He's still on his feet. Looked like he was going to be in trouble. He's still on his feet, gets down to the 10-yard line. So what, what looked run. to be a loss of yardage ends up being a 10-yard gain for Weston Robbins. What a run by Robinson. How many tackles did he break? I, how many players does Williamsburg have out there? I believe they all had a <laughs> all shot at him. And a gain of 10. It'll be first and 10 now. Pike will at the 11-yard line. They can get the first down if they get to the one. One wide out, or twin split right, one wide out left. Shotgun. And they hand it off up the middle to Shirtliff. Shirtliff breaks a couple of tackles, gets down inside the 10, call it the seven yard line, or eight yard line. It'll be second down and about eight coming up for Pineville. As uh, Shirtliff now with 130 yards on the night. And I'll tell you what, Pineville just manhandling this uh, Williamsburg that run, front line. That, that run there previously by Robinson, like one of those Madonna runs. Everybody had a shot at it. <laughs> this will be <laughs> second down and seven. High formation. And they give the ball up the middle to, I believe it's Shirtliff again. And he gets, uh, gets a couple maybe. They're going to say down to about the seven-yard line for a gain of what would you say, about two on the play two, two. yeah. Third down now and about six coming up for the Panthers. 1.35 to go here in the third quarter as Pike will just about to run Williamsburg out of time here. Got to run them out of town with this goal. Well, that's play. Sword back to throw, rolling out to his left. Looking, looking, throwing into the end zone, and it's going to be caught. Touchdown, Pike will, and just... Parrish getting into the ball, or getting into the scoring act now as he catches the seven yard, eight yard touchdown. One minute, 18 seconds to go into the third, and if Dandy Don was here, he could be singing and turn out the lights for you, I believe. He sure could. That's the third touchdown pass tonight for Derek Sowert. And snap is down, the kick is up. It looks to be good. It is. So 41 to 8, Pikeville. 118 to go in the third quarter. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. And here's the kick. The Panthers kick it down the middle of the field. It'll be taken at about the 18-yard line by Williamsburg. 
And up across the 31, 32, maybe the 33 yard line is Williamsburg. It is uh, 22. 22. Part of the read, uh, yep. William Renfro. William Renfro. Greg needs to be around the valley. Now, Williamsburg is very close to Renfro Valley, so uh, probably the valley's probably named after his ancestors. I tell you what, uh, probably wishes he was home in the valley right now, the way things are going probably here for that. the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets is Pikeville doing what you expected Williamsburg to do, put the ball up in the air effectively, throwing three touchdown passes, and back to throw this time is Greer. Greer setting low. I thought they were setting up the screen pass. If they did, the uh, lineman would have come a little bit too quickly. Too quickly and uh, didn't have anything really set up. So Greer making a smart play there, getting rid of the football. It'll be second down and 10 now. 106 to play in the third quarter, and all Pikeville fans. That may be the understatement of the evening. As Pikeville, the Pikeville defense been playing almost as well as the offense. Twins split each way again. And Greer will go in the shotgun, one back in the backfield for protection. Greer, back to throw. He's got a little bit of time, this one, and zings one out there. It'll be caught, and so will the receiver after a gain of about four yards. Is that Ayers over there on the catch? Yes, it is. Be a gain of about five on the play, and the clock continuing to run as he didn't, he didn't get out of bounds. So third down and five coming up now for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. Greer brings his team up to the line of scrimmage. He'll have trips left. One wide out right, and he'll go out of the shotgun with one back in there for protection. Greer. And it looks like uh, Pikeville's going to jump off sides. And let's see if it will be enough for the first down. It'll be close. I'm not, not sure if they were drawn. I didn't see any movement on the offensive line. No, it is nope. offside pipe, so I believe that will give them the first down. 30 seconds all is left here in this third quarter, and, you know, Williamsburg now needing to score just to get some respectability out of this one. And yeah, it is first down. First and 10 now from the 44-yard line of Williamsburg. Twin split each way. Greer will go from under center this time with one back in the backfield. Greer stands up, throws one out there quickly. It's going to be caught, and the receiver is going to get down into Pikeville territory now at about the 49-yard line, where it'll be second down and about four coming up for Williamsburg. Well, no, they're going to say he got down to the 40, almost the 40 yard line. An eight-yard pickup. So second down and two. Is that on the catch? Uh, was it Ayers, I believe, Ken? I believe it was again. Well, that will bring the third quarter to an end. 41-8, to eight. Pikeville on top here yeah. on the Intermountain Sports Network. Begins over then overthrows his receiver. I believe it was intended over there for number 13, Will Hill. And it'll be third down and about two now coming up for Williamsburg. Will Hill. Would have been a good name for Oral Roberts, wouldn't it? <laughs> and that'll, that'll bring up a third down and two now for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets here at the 48-yard line of the Pikeball Panthers. And this Panther defense looking tough so far. Cripps left, one wide out right. Again, in the shotgun is Greer. Greer has some time. Now he's under pressure, rolling out to his right, stepping up, pumps, throws. He's got a man in, throws it just behind him, incomplete. Intended over there for 21, Brett Barton. And that's going to leave uh, Williamsburg with a fourth down and two yards to go. You're down 41 to eight. You've got to go for it here. You know, uh, oh, no choice. Kind of one of those uh, no-brainer calls if you're a coach over there. And, well, personal foul against the Bible Panthers, so I guess well, they won't have to go for it on fourth, guess fourth down. They got the first down. And it'll move the ball down inside the 30-yard line, I believe. Well, no, inside the 35. 30, about the 32. So a big, uh, some of the bigger plays on the evening have come from personal fouls on well, Pikeville. The, uh, the one touchdown drive that Williamsburg had was helped out. Well, if you'll remember, a 15-yard uh, light conduct penalty that helped keep the drive going. And back to throw quickly is Williamsburg. He gets rid of it out to his receiver over there. That's uh, 21. 21. Hill. I'm sorry, that's Barton. Not Hill. Yep. Barton. 
And Jess Parrish wrapped him up around the neck and took him down. Martin didn't like it. We've got another flag down. Might have got the face mask. Yeah, you, know, you, you wonder about that. You saw that he, he did get up around the head. Let's see what the call will be. Personal foul. Oh, personal foul oh, okay. against Williamsburg. I know, uh, I know Barton got up and was really angry. I, I didn't see the face mask. I thought that Paris just had him around the neck. Yeah. So uh, Barton had probably committed the personal foul as he was angry after the play. And that's a big penalty right there for Williamsburg. It'll be 15 yards tacked on to that, so it'll bring up a second down and about 22, I guess, Ken. Maybe 23, because it's from the point of the foul, since it's a dead ball foul. 11 and a 11.37 to play in this football game, and Williamsburg's starting to show the frustration on the field out there now. His pipe was just, uh, just destroyed them so far. Twins split each way. Greer will go out of the shotgun. Greer takes the snap, now stepping up into the pocket, throws, and overthrows his intended receiver out there. And that was intended over for 36. Matt Jones, and it'll bring up uh, third down, and I believe they got to get back to Prestonsburg. Got a long ways to go. 11.31 now to go in the football game. Williamsburg uh, going to run with trips left. One wide out right. Greer again will go out of the shotgun. Greer takes the snap and back to throw. Throws it out. And behind his receiver, it's a lateral. And that's, again, a big loss coming up for Williamsburg. That'll move the ball back to the 49-yard line. He got the pass back to Fred, his fullback. And it'll bring up fourth and, uh, well, I mean, it's fourth. And you got to punt it, I guess, really here. Fourth, it's about 29 yards for a first down, so. Now they've got to get back to the 23-yard line, almost the 22-yard line of Pikeville. And let's see what uh, if Williamsburg will bring in the punting team. Brett Barton. Brett Barton. Uh, yep. punt it. And the official has a timeout trying to get Barton's chin strap fast enough. And now the official is also the equipment manager now. He is. Multi-talented man. I can see Robert Staggs doing that. Yeah. Or at least in his, in his, in his, in his younger yeah. days. He <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, his, uh -huh. his, uh, his compadres were tough on him last, uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. They sure were. And Barton now set to punt the football away for Williamsburg. Gets it and gets an end-over-end -end kick. It takes a Williamsburg bounce. Pike will, will try to get away with it. Actually, the best punt of the day is this one will go down to the nine-yard line and trap oh, Williams, or Pike will back inside their own 10. A 42-yard punt with no return. Yeah, I tell you what, that's that's always good in your situation like this for Williamsburg. Of course, Pike will really, nothing really matter here. They just want to keep the keep the clock running and, and take this win to the house here as they've got the big lead with 10.33 to go in the football game. Got it well in hand here. I'm sure Coach McNamee would be happy to put together a long, time-consuming drive here on the ground. And the eye formation in the backfield, and this time the handoff to the little man coming out of there, Weston Robinson, and he'll get out across the 10 to about the 12-yard line, so it'll be a gain of about four. Second down and six now coming up for the Pikeville Panthers. And look for Pikeville to take all the time in the world in the huddle here on this drive, trying to eat that clock up. Uh, Williamsburg not going to take a time out here because uh, until they get a chance, if they have a chance to get back in the football game. Exactly 10 minutes to go in the game. And a long drive back down to uh, the Tennessee state line here for Williamsburg. And a high formation again. This time it'll be twins left. Sword takes it. And we're going to have a whistle on the play. I don't think uh, they got that one off. It'll be last game. Pikeville will take the five-yard penalty, so that's that'll bring our first delay of game penalty we've had tonight. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that'll bring up a second down and 11 now coming up for Pikeville. Well, second down and 12, actually. Move it back to about the eight-yard line. 9.47 to go now in the football game. As Sword comes all the way from the sideline. He came all the way over here to meet Coach McNamee to get to play this time. It'll be twins left. High formation in the backfield again. Sword 
Takes a snap, and he's going to throw the little pass across the middle, and first down yardage out to the 24-yard line for Brett Gibson. Yeah, I'll tell you, Pikeville has run that. They, they set that play up perfectly. They sure did. A 17-yard pickup. Sword to Gibson. Yeah, the little play-action pass. They faked the handoff up the middle to the big man, Sherliff, and in the, found Gibson wide open. And he was able to, matter of fact, one, one man short of picking up the touchdown there. First and 10 now at the, and this time the handoff up the middle to Hamilton, I believe, back into the ball game. Ball back out to the 26 yard line. That was uh, Robinson was that over Robinson? here. Okay. Two yards in the play. And bring up a second down and eight now coming up for the Panthers. And look for look for to keep the ball on the ground here until they get in a situation where they have to throw it. Second down and eight. Eight fifty-five to go in the in the contest. Twins right. Again, the eye formation in the backfield. Sword takes the snap, hands it off up the middle of this time to Hamilton. And Hamilton gets out to the 30-yard line for a gain of about four. It'll be third down and four coming up for the Panthers. And the clock continuing to tick down. Looks like uh, Pikeville may be able to start making their reservations down there in the Somerset area for next Friday night. Yes, it does. Of course, uh, we don't want to count Paintsville out yet, which uh, Paintsville down there tonight, but I don't, don't don't see much of a shot at that upset. Well, Paintsville losing Shane Simpkins here late in the season. Tough on them as uh, one of their more explosive uh, players in the backfield. One wide out split each way now, the I formation. And back to throw is Sword. Sword now under pressure. He's going to pick it up, and uh, he still wants to throw it. And now he's going to have the ball knocked loose. And Williamsburg has it down at about the 21-yard line. So Sword uh, trying to do a little bit too much with that one, maybe. Uh, right. He's in a position, didn't know for sure whether he wanted to run or to throw, and uh, didn't tuck it in good to run with it. He kind of still had it out there in that open hand, uh, looking maybe to pass it nowhere to go with it and uh, ball knocked loose and it'll put uh, it'll bring up first and 10 now for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets at the 21 yard line 752 to play in the football game twin split each way Greer will go from under center this time gets set takes the snap and now he's under pressure gets drilled quickly by Parrish and he may be the face mask on that one is that I didn't see him get the face mask but I saw the head jerk and soft flags are flying a couple of them real quickly so personal foul face mask that should be that probably be half the distance to the goal yeah I think you're right there Ken it'll be uh, but it's a big play right there for Williamsburg again as they actually it'll go no it'll be from the spot of the foul, so it'll move it down to about the 14-yard line, which I guess will be 15 yards from the 30. It's going to be half the distance to the goal line, <laughs> isn't it? Well, actually spotted on the 13-yard line, so. 7.48 to play in the contest. One wide out, split wide right, trips left, and Greer will go from under center now for the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets. As soon as the officials get the chain set, we're ready to go. We've got a, uh, got a first down and two now. <laughs> yeah. And Greer takes the snap and pitches it back this time to the tailback. And Trent uh, might have got a gain in one, no more. Might have got a loss of one, too. Yeah, there. it's going be, it's it's be close. Much, but uh, I, to, I don't know, Charlie, and, and I, you know, I'm... I'm like you. I'm a huge uh, college football fan. Of course, you do uh, sports casting, do all the Pikeville College games. I'm a big NFL fan, and I watch so much football. And sometimes I get confused on the rules, but I think a personal foul is an automatic first down at any level. I think they uh, blew that not being a first and ten. You, you could be right there again. I think you're. I think it's correct as well. But anyway, the Greer rolling out, looking to the end zone, throws it, ball tipped and incomplete as. Is that Hill trying to reach up and make a big play, and that was a dangerous play in itself. That football floating around in the air could have been picked off. Right, I'm surprised Brett Gibson wasn't yeah. there to pull He's it in. He's been everywhere else tonight. He sure has. And seven minutes and one second left in this one. 41 to eight, Pikeville dominating this one down the stretch. Three minutes, or three, 
third down and three to go there for the go. Yellow Jackets. Trips right, one wide out left. And Greer rolling out to his right, and under pressure, throwing to the end zone. And is it going to be a touchdown? Nope. They said he didn't. I don't know, Ken. I, I believe think, they missed that one. I think he had, had he one had foot, one in, foot in, in. That's down. all you got to have in high school. That's all you got to have in high school or college. And I but think the, he definitely uh, had one in. But uh, the officials say no. No good. And they don't have the little red flag we were talking about earlier to throw out on the field and get the replay <laughs> on that one. So it'll be incomplete pass. Bring up fourth down and three now from the 12 yard or from the 12 yard line. That's it. And 6.54 to go here in the football game. It's Williamsburg coming up with trips right, one wide out left. Again, Greer will go from the shotgun. Greer takes the snap, and now he's looking. He's going to run it himself. Greer has the first down. He's down inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line. We'll be first and goal now, Williamsburg. As a 5-yard pickup for Greer, that's the biggest play of the night for Williamsburg on the ground as uh, three carries now for Greer for uh, seven yards total. The only other person to carry the ball has been Justin Tread out of the backfield. He's had four carries of minus nine yards. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you'd like to say that's been all pikeable, but uh, you know if you don't run the football at all, they're coming hard. And again, now they give it off to Trent. Trent actually is going to pick up a couple of yards. Ken going to get down the inside the five. Uh, that was... Number 36, Matt Jones. Jones, his first okay. carry of the night. And Greer looking over to the sideline now to get his call. It's going to be second down and goal now from the five. Ball sitting squarely on the five-yard line. Williamsburg coming back up the line of scrimmage. Twins split each way. Greer will go from under center. Greer. Looking over the defense now, takes the quick snap, quick step, going to the corner, incomplete. It'll be second down, or third down and goal now from the five coming up for the and Yellow Jackets. out there for Barton. And Williamsburg really going with those touch passes for the corner and just not able to pull them in. I know Ken over here trying to figure out, that's a lot of mass, trying to just keep up how many times he's thrown the football that tonight. sure is. That's 29 pass attempts on the night. Now Williamsburg going to go out of the wishbone, for more, well, wishbone formation, rear under center. Takes it, and again, he's going to roll out looking, throwing it back against the grain in the end zone. Touchdown, Williamsburg. And Barton. Brett Barton, a good job to hang on to that ball. He got drilled just as that ball got there, and uh, he hung on to it for the touchdown. And I heard the other announcer over calling it a post pattern. It was an awful short post as he's down <laughs> in the middle of the field there. 5.41 to play in the ball game. Williamsburg gets on the board again. It's 41-14 Pikeville, but uh, I think it's going to be too little too late in this one. I think it is. Yeah, let's see. You have, to, you have to score a lot quicker than they have been doing so far to get it, give it even get any numbers up in this one. Although this is, you know, this is Kentucky, and we have seen a lot of that in the past of some serious blown leads. Greer puff fakes looking down inside trying to get the two-point conversion. Greer now going to run for it himself. He dives into the end zone. It's good. So the extra point conversion for Greer makes it 41-16 with 5.41 to go in the football game. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. Pikeville. Five minutes, 41 seconds to go in the ball game. The Pikeville Panthers in control here, leading at 41-16. Here's an onside, onside kick. kick, and Pikeville will recover it at the 49-yard line. I was just about ready to say, do you think there's anybody in the state of Kentucky that doesn't expect this onside kick? All right. Brent, yeah. Brenton Hamilton again on the uh, pickup of the onside kick. That's a couple of those he's recovered tonight. Yeah, Pikeville had their... Uh, Backs and receivers up on the line of scrimmage there to try to pick up that loose ball. It'll be first and 10 now for the Panthers from the 49-yard line. And uh, I I would just about, if I were a betting man, I'd put money on that football not being in the air for the rest of this one on this side. And there's the handoff up the middle again to the fullback. Let's see, is that Shirtliff in there this time? No, uh, uh, Shirtliff's still Hamilton. in the backfield. That's okay. good, Brent Hamilton. Or, uh, and it'll be a, maybe a looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage maybe a gain of one it'll be second down well, second down and ten now coming up to five well, no gain on the play 
And the clock will run down just as, you know, five will let it run down to the bare, the bare minimum, I would think, before they snap this one. And again, Sword gets under center, takes the snap, hands it off to Sup. Robinson, Robinson looked like he was going to go down, kind of did a backflip out of there. Ken got up to about the 44-yard line now for a great pickup. Boy, that was a great job by Robinson. He got hit hard at the line of scrimmage and looked like he was going down, what? but somehow stayed on his feet. Well, you know, you see, well, actually, I don't know that he did. It looked like his feet came up off the ground as he fell on forward onto the pile, but he realized he hadn't hit the ground, so he rolled right. off of it just kept on running. Fell on, on the back of another player and kept going six yards. Boy, Robinson, he nears the 100-yard mark now. He's got 99 yards. Third down and four now coming up for the... Panthers, one wide out split each way. Again, the eye formation in the backfield. Sword takes the snap and again hands it off to the second man through. That's Robinson. He's got the first down. He cuts back to the inside. He's out across the 30, 25, 20, 10, 5. One man touchdown. Pikeville as Weston Robinson takes it in from 44 yards out to put the Panthers up now. 47-16. And I tell you what, uh, I believe he's over the 100 yard yeah, mark now. I think so. So that means five will now with two backs over the 100 yard mark here this evening. And one, what, about 70, 75 yards for uh, Hamilton was 64 yards on just 10 carries. 143 now for Robinson and 132 for Robert Sherman. So great performance. Here comes the extra point kick. It is up. It's good. It's 48. 16 Pike Bowl, 4.42 to go in the football game. We'll be right back on your Intermountain Sports Network. We'll begin. Wade Williamsburg, 48 to 16, as looks like the Panthers will move on forward here. This being the opening round of the playoffs. And here's the kick. It'll be taken at about the 20 yard line by Williamsburg. Jones trying to get to the outside, gets across the 40. And he's still on his feet. He's down to about the 45-yard line. Will be first and 10 Williamsburg as Jones with a pretty good return that time. But uh, definitely not enough to get back in this one. You said 433 left in the football game. There's 433 left in the clock. The football game's over. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. Yeah, you're right. It's a little technical there. It's over. As Pike will, well, I would say they would get everybody into the ball game, but Pike will low on numbers this year, so everybody's probably already played. Greer pass it. Trips right. <laughs> One wide out left. Greer back to throw. And this time it's going to be complete out there to is that, uh, 22. 22. Let's see. Williams. William Renfro. It's his first catch of the night. And a gain of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. And Williamsburg coming back up to the line of scrimmage. Uh, well, actually they're staying. I thought they'd be going into the no huddle at this point in the ball game. Going to their four minute drills. They've got twins split each way. Greer will be in the shotgun. Greer takes the snap and well, it's a bad snap. Greer falls on it, I think, finally at about the 40 yard line. So it'll bring up uh, the. That's not Greer. That's oh. number 23. And uh, is Greer in the game? Thomas Frazier, the backup quarterback, into the ball game now. I guess, uh, I guess they just want to get Frazier some snaps there. This, like you said, this ball game's over. So uh, this uh, Frazier, a freshman, and uh, Greer only a junior. So uh, that young man will be back next year. He, he is a fine quarterback. Yes, Charlie. he is. And Frazier back to throw, rolling out to his left. Comes up the line of scrimmage, thrown down the middle of the field, intercepted by the Panthers. And here comes Pikeville back the other way with it, cutting back in across the 50. It'll be first and 10 at about the 50 yard line for Tim Champlin of the Pikeville Panthers. Coverage there by the Panthers, and the freshman quarterback throws an interception on his first pass. And they're going to mark him right about the 49-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 Panthers at their own 49-yard line here with 3.15 to play in this one. And I, I don't know that Pipeville's got enough. Like I say, I don't know if they've got enough uh, subs to put into the ball game here. As, uh, yep, yep, they're making some changes now. As you see, number seven, Chase Huffman, the sophomore quarterback for Pipeville coming into the ball game. I have to pull out my roster now and keep up these the names and ones we're not used to seeing. Let's see, Jacob Sword will be the tailback on this play. 
Huffman takes the snap, hands it off up the middle to the fullback. Let's see, is that uh, three? John Michael Mayo? Or, no, I'm sorry, 34. Ryan Altman. No, I'm sorry, it's 24. Let's see, 34 is no, Ryan Shirtland. That was 34 on the carry. Ryan Shirtland. I think it is Robert's younger brother. It'll be a gain of about five on the play. It'll be second down and five coming up for the Panthers. Twins split each way. This time, Huffman will go out of the shotgun. Huffman takes the snap, and he's going to carry it himself. He takes it off the right side, out across the 40, down to the 39-yard line for another. Pikeville first down with 2.30 to play in the football game. So, Jason. Yeah, they say Chase Huffman, one of the uh, one of the better athletes on this team, only a sophomore, so he'll be back to. Uh, I understand he's uh, the fastest player on this team. I heard early in the year there on the, uh, the drills and the, the being timed in the 40, he's the fastest player on on this Piper team. And Piper will come back out now with uh, one wide out split each way, I formation in the backfield. Huffman will go under center. Huffman. Takes the snap, and he's going to pitch it back in the backfield. And that's the other sword coming out of the backfield, Jacob Sword. And he's going to pick up another Pikeville first down, I believe, Ken, down to about the 29-yard line of Williamsburg. And if that's he where they're going to mark him at. 10 yards on the play. So Pikeville, I tell you, when, when things are going your way, they're going your way because they brought everybody on the sidelines into the ball game, and they're still moving the football. They sure are. First and 10 now from the 29-yard line. Minute, just under two minutes to play in this contest. One wide out split each way again. Huffman will go under center. Long snap count. Huffman takes it. And, he, and again, that's Ryan Shirtless. And Ryan gets down to the 20, call it the 23-yard line. A gain of six. It'll be second down in the four. Well, actually, a gain of, a, well, there, he moves it back a little bit. That's second down and four now coming up for the Panthers. Huffman getting his call from the sideline, running it back in as uh, Chris McNamee wanted to get these younger players some big uh, experience here in the playoffs. One wide out split each way again. The eye formation in the backfield. Huffman. Long count. Takes the snap and again hands it off to Jacob Sword. Sword. Trying to fight his way to the outside. Breaks a couple of tackles. Sword has another. Panther first down inside the 15-yard line. 106 to play in the ball game. And the Panther junior varsity team now looking to score on Williamsburg. Yes, they are. 106 to play in the football game. First and 10 now from the 13-yard line coming up for the Pikeville Panthers. And the clock uh, continuing to run now. Heading into the final minute of the football game. One wide out each way again. The eye formation in the backfield. Huffman. Long snap count again. Takes it. Hands it off to Shirtliff. Shirtliff's going to get down to about the 10-yard line for a gain of three. And let's see. That may be the last. Uh, well, now we're going to have another change in the ball game as John Mayo comes into the. John Michael Mayo, the freshman quarterback, coming into the ball game now for Pikeville. Mayo will go under center. He'll have the eye formation behind him. One wide out split each way. Mayo takes the snap, hands it off again up the middle, and I believe that's uh, Shirtliff. Shirtliff fights his way down close to the five, maybe the four-yard line, and it'll be third down. Well, that should be the last play of the football game, and the Pikeville Panthers will win it. 48 to 16 on a dominant performance here this evening. Uh, over the Williamsburg Yellow Jackets and Ken, I tell you, just a, a great game plan coming in here by the Pyroll coaching staff. They came in, and a lot of you know, a lot of people, including us, uh, thought that this would be a different football game. You know, we looked at the stats that Williamsburg was able to put up during the regular season, and Pyroll, a much improved football team as this season has worn on, as they've really come down the stretch and made some big plays. Yes, they have. They have improved dramatically from the first of the year and uh, really impressive here tonight. They have, Ken, and I'll uh, tell you, uh, we'll just go ahead and keep it right here while you're doing those uh, final stats, but 
this uh, Williamsburg team coming in here wanting to throw the football and this tight ball pass defense has been huge this evening. Uh, uh, the, the front line making the big knockdowns, coming in, putting the pressure on the quarterback, slapped down a couple of footballs, tip, tipped a couple of more, Pine will come up with uh, two, two or three big interceptions on the evening and then putting on a exhibition of running talent there in the ball game. They sure have. Uh, we want to uh, run down the uh, stats here. As, uh, Proud Daddy just walking by us there. Uh, Royce Mayo, I guess. Uh, oh. John Michael, he was just telling me that's his son as he got, to, got into the football game here to make that last play of the ball game. <laughs> uh, to run down the individual stats, first of all, for Williamsburg, quarterback Andy Greer completed 16 out of 31 passes for 127 yards and uh, one touchdown on the night. Uh, on, in the running department, uh, Greer had uh, three carries for seven yards. Uh, Greer also threw, uh, threw a pair of interceptions. The uh, backup quarterback came in, threw one pass, and it was intercepted. So three interceptions tonight for Pikeville. Uh, Justin Trett ran the ball four times for a minus nine yards. Uh, Matt Jones carried it once for two yards. On the receiving end for Williamsburg, they were led by Tyler Ayers as he had eight catches for 44 yards. Uh, Brett Barton had five catches for 42 yards and a touchdown. Will Hill, two catches for 36 yards. He also ran a touchdown in from one yard out. And uh, William Renfro, uh, one catch for three yards on the night. And for the Pikeville Panthers, as uh, very impressive offensively, uh, Derek Sword just a tremendous job at quarterback tonight. Uh, didn't throw a lot, but boy, when he did, he was he was right on the money. Uh, he completed eight of 11 passes, 97 yards, and three touchdowns. And uh, that's pretty good, Charlie. Just complete eight passes, and three of them go for the yeah. end zone. Yeah, I tell you, it's pretty impressive. impressive. It sure is. And uh, what a... Uh, to, Go over the receiving here. Uh, Jesse Parrish had three catches for 18 yards, uh, one of those being a seven-yard touchdown. Matt Sexton, two catches, 34 yards, uh, one of those a 25-yard touchdown reception. Brett Gibson had two catches for 42 yards, and uh, one of those a 25-yard touchdown reception. Brett Gibson also two interceptions on the night. What a game for that young man. Uh, the running department, though, is where Pike will really excel. What a performance tonight by, by the three running backs here that carried the ball a lot. Uh, Weston Robinson ended up leading them in rushing tonight. He had 21 carries, 143 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Robert Sherla, 14 carries, 132 yards, and two touchdowns for Sherla. Brenton Hamilton had 10 carries for 64 yards on the night. And uh, late in the game there, uh, Ryan Shirtliff came in, carried the ball four times, picked up 16 yards. Uh, Chase Huffman had one carry for six yards, and uh, Jacob Sword two carries for 19 yards. And uh, then what did uh, Mayo have on that last carry there, Charlie? I think he got a couple, he got of, couple yards on the couple last play there. But a great performance tonight by the Pikeville Panthers as uh, the passing game's great, the running game's great, the defense is great, and a uh, good win here for the Panthers. See what a big, big, big victory there for the Pikeville Panthers. They'll go on to the second round of the playoffs. Uh, we're assuming they'll be going down to the Somerset area barring an upset by the Pikeville Panthers, I mean by the Paintsville Tigers. Paintsville Tigers. And, uh, I tell you what, the, a tough Somerset team they're going down there to play, but Pineville looking very good here in the early going of the playoffs. Yes, they are, and uh, who knows? You know, this, uh, this Pineville team, uh, a lot of experience at this time of year, Charlie. A lot of success, uh, three straight state championships a few years ago, and uh, uh, even the past few years, they've, had, they've been to the state semifinals and the, and the regional finals several times, and uh, you can't ever count them out. This is a great football program. Coach Chris McNamee does a fine job here, and... Uh, uh, who knows what'll happen when they go to Somerset? Well, that's true. If there's a fish, and as they were tonight, and can mix up this uh, ground attack and the, and the passing game like they did tonight, uh, uh, who knows? Maybe yep. they can go to Somerset and come away with the big win. You never know. It could be stranger things have happened, as they say. But that should uh, just about wrap it up for us here from the Hillard Howard Field in the Hamley Athletic Complex in Pikeville. So for Shane um, Shane Murray on camera, for Jerry Scott back at the station, and for Ken Hall, this is Charlie Benson saying thank you and good night.
the bare, the bare minimum, I would think, before they snap this one. And again, Sword gets under center, takes the snap, hands it off to Sup. Robinson, Robinson looked like he was going to go down, kind of did a backflip out of there again, got up to about the 44-yard line now for a great pickup. Boy, that was a great job by Robinson. He got hit hard at the line of scrimmage and looked like he was going down, but somehow stayed on his feet. Well, you know, you